with emotion filled right up to the double decks here in Husky Stadium. It's Stanford coming in to take on Washington and kick off not only the 93 football season, but a new era in college football for the Huskies. Hello again, everybody. Don Boyer with Chuck Nelson as we begin our fourth year bringing you these games on Prime Sports Northwest. Jim Lambright, a redhead down on that field, starting a new era as the 22nd head coach for Washington. Well, he has a new role here at the University of Washington, but he has been a Husky seemingly forever. A player here, an assistant coach here. He waited a long time to get this job. Doesn't like the way he got it, but now that he has it, he's going to make the best of it. Loyalty pays off. We can say that after 25 years. Now, the unlucky guest, the Stanford Cardinal with Bill Walsh and the comments that he made throughout the summer, we know already much about. But coming in, their quarterback, Steve Stenstrom, he remembers the nightmare he went through last year. Uh, the whole Stanford team does. Steve Stenstrom didn't even make it through the first half. You see 5 for 11, only 93 yards. He is, however, a very good quarterback. The consensus pick as the all Pac-10 quarterback for this coming season. And think of this. At 21 games as a starter at Stanford, this team is 17 and 4. He can play. On the defensive side of the ball, Tyrone Parker, a defensive lineman, 6'4", 290, broke his leg in the spring, but his leadership will be very important. This is a Stanford defense that only has five starters that have seen significant game time. So on the field and on the sideline, Tyrone Parker will be a force. I'm not too sure who is more nervous, either Damon Heward, the quarterback, or his father, Mike. <laughs> well, this is Damon's first start as a quarterback here at the University of Washington, but here's a kid that was born to play quarterback. His father is a high school football coach. From the time that he's been two years old, he's been groomed for this role. He's a big, strong kid, shows, has shown good leadership ability. He is also a player in his first college start in a very big football game, but he should be ready to play. On the defensive side of the ball, two leaders on the Husky defense. They will line up on either side of the line of scrimmage, Andy Mason and Jamal Fontaine. You see 21 tackles for loss and 11 quarterback sacks in between them. These are two guys that Steve Stenger remembers as well. Jamal <laughs> Fontaine is the player that knocked him out of the game last year. Uh, I'm your worst nightmare is what rings through my mind from a certain <laughs> movie. What about emotion today? It feels like a bowl game out here. A lot of people want to vent some frustration. A lot of steam coming out the top of the heads of players and fans. Well, there's been so much negativity surrounding this Husky yeah. program over the last nine, ten months since the Billy Joe Hobart scandal broke. You have got a lot of people that have been talking an awful lot. Husky players, Stanford coaches, mm -hmm. Husky fans. This is their chance to finally strap it on, yeah. <laughs> get it on the field, and play some football. And let's do that. We'll have the kickoff and the starting lineups between Stanford and Washington here at Husky Stadium. Coming right up. Back to a jam packed Husky Stadium. Don Poyer along with Chuck Nelson. The first game of a new era, the first game of 93. And it began with a very emotional tribute to former and retired head coach Don James, who was up above with his wife Carol in the press box. The team took a knee, raised the helmets as Don and Carol waved on. And a tribute to 18 years and the new man, Jim Lambright, who was there for. Every one of those 18 years and six Rose Bowls and Orange Bowls and Aloha Bowls, he was there. Stanford won the coin toss. They deferred. Washington will receive and defend the East goal. And the 93 season is finally here. The series overall very close and a streaky series. Washington on a roll now with nine straight, but only one up in the many many years they have played the last three years overwhelming 135 points to 30 the helmets still up for the kickoff Aaron Mills will kick off normally the punter has a powerful leg more powerful than Eric Abrams the normal kicker from the left hash mark hash marks moved in about seven feet in this new 93 season back to receive Napoleon Kaufman on that same hash mark. Leon Neal next to Kaufman as Mills will kick off the senior. Game one, 93 season is here, and it goes to Kaufman on the goal line. To the 10. To the 31 yard line, and that is where Damon Ewart will come out in his debut as a starter for the Huskies. Great return by Kaufman. Ewart will be the starter, as you see. 
going five for five so far in completions in his career. And as Chuck said earlier, I'll go make my one prediction of the day. Damon Hewitt will throw his first collegiate incompletion. The rest of the receivers and backs Kaufman Jones Janowski Shelley Janowski in his debut Mark Bruner the veteran now junior at tight end and the people up front the strength of this team this front line very experienced first and ten on the thirty two yard line Kaufman right off the bat trying to get outside to the forty has a first down up to the forty three yard line brought down by Toby Norwood the left inside linebacker one of the few experienced players on this Stanford defense. On defense, Tyrone Parker, Jason Fisk, been there of many years. David Carter, the new kid. Norwood, one of four regular starters, all in the yellow. Coy Gibbs, part-time. And then Ellis Bryant, who's been there for several years. Tommy Connect, part-time starter. And Kevin Garnett, the new free safety for John Lynch. First and ten. His first throw complete. Shelley up to midfield and brought down there. Fumble, but recovered, I believe, by Washington. Ellis was there along with connect defensively number eight seven yard gain Husky coaching staff wants to give Damon Hewitt a completion under his belt Jason Shelley catches the ball wants to make a move can't decide what to do the one thing he's got to do is hang on to the thing a nice hustle downfield I believe by Frank Garcia on the recovery. Second down and three. And the option of the pitch. Kaufman and well played by Stanford. Extremely well played by John Sims, the right outside linebacker. A nice job by John Sims, but not a very good job by Damon Hewitt. He's got to carry that ball out of ways to put some pressure on the corner there. That time, John Sims was able to play both the pitch man and the quarterback. See Jason Shelley down on the field, those wide receivers trying to make blocks on the option play Jason has been fighting injuries throughout the preseason and football camp but was healthy enough to start and has that one seven yard reception so far today wide receiver not the deepest position that the Huskies have with the one game suspension of Joe Krolik. Dave Janoski making his first start at the other side I mean you get to Theron Hill a sophomore DJ McCarthy who hasn't seen a whole lot of playing time. Well, the three deeps are least familiar names. Damon Barry and Theron Hill on the listing coming into this game. Bill Walsh, after the comments made throughout the spring and summer, sent a case of Chardonnay wine up to the Washington staff. As you see, the injured left leg of Jason Shelley. Jim Lambright simply said it's not as good as Northwest wine. There's been a lot of things that have been said going going back and forth. Mr. Walsh being less than complimentary and then spending the last couple of months doing some big time backpedaling. And more of the glasses and big nose and mustache coming into the airport here in Seattle yesterday. It was great. Third down and three. Fewer across the middle has the first down depending where they mark it. But I think he's got it. As it is complete to Dave Janoski. That is his first catch as a Washington Husky. The redshirt freshman out of Corona, California. He may be replacing Joe Krolik at that wide receiver position. Looks like he's replacing him in the appearance as well. He was anticipating the start. Damon Hewitt, the backup quarterback. First and ten, now on the 45 of Stanford. Almost, almost sprung it wide open. Kaufman stopped by John Sims, just a sophomore, replacing Dave Garnett the outstanding outside linebacker as you said Don the strength of this Husky offense is in its offensive line Four of the five starters are returning Lincoln Kennedy the obvious loss but Huskies would like to be able to pound the ball on Stanford don't put pressure on our quarterback in his first start second down and six Kaufman three carries 15 yards four carries gets a block from Jim Neville and he's down to the 36 yard line about a yard short of the first down. Sims again involved with the tackle, number 53, along with Toby Norwood. Kaufman and Bean O'Brien expected to be the one-two punch for Washington from that tailback position. Bean O'Brien also serving a one-game suspension. Some more fallout of the Pac-10 and NCAA penalties. 
Napoleon Kaufman will certainly get more carries today than he normally would have. Trying to break through that old lactic acid barrier right now. That first quarter is a killer for any football player until you get through that and then you can go all day. Third down, they need one. Matt Jones, the call, and gets the first down with a nice surge by the offensive line. Matt Jones, in 100 career carries, has lost yardage only twice. Nothing real complicated on that play. Two tight ends dive up the middle. We've said it lots of times. Our guys are stronger than your guys. Our big guys are better than your big guys. Here's their chance to show it. So it'll be first and 10. Ball on the 33. No score right at the 12-minute mark here in the first quarter. From the 33. Little delay. Kaufman down to the 28. Toby Norwood with a tackle. Kaufman, 11 carries, 87 yards against Stanford here in 1992. It'll take a while for this Stanford defense to get used to this quickness and speed of Napoleon Kaufman. You talk about your pursuit angles and your think where you have to go to catch this guy. And when with Napoleon Kaufman, those angles are considerably different. Five carries, 25 <laughs> yards. We're still in the first quarter. Touch pass, the wrong hill. Incomplete. Hill going against number eight, Kwame Ellis. Picking on the new kid, the sophomore out of Oakland. Nice, nice job by David Heward of looking to his right, his primary receiver, nothing there. Come back, throw the ball where my guy can get it and their guy can't. Kwame Ellis never does turn around. Theron Hill has a chance to make the play. Does catch the ball, but by the time he wraps it up, he's well out of bounds. So it's third down and five. Need to get inside the 23. Won't make it. About a yard short, maybe even a half yard. Tackle by Coy Gibbs, the right inside linebacker. And the first decision for new head coach Jim Lambright. With a fourth, thrust. fourth and one. Oh, with a the thrust they're getting. I gotta believe that they would want to go for it with the thrust and surge that Jim Lambright's getting from that offensive line. Okay, Lewis coming in. Eric Bjornsson bringing the play in, not coming in to hold. He has worked out at wide receiver. We talked about <laughs> they were thin at that position last year. Eric Bjornsson, a very good player, had 14 receptions last year. Here it is, fourth and one. Jones hit hard, very close. The second surge by Matt Jones took him close enough. I, I don't think he made it. Doubtful on the first surge, second surge. If that left foot of the official, it. as you look at Jim Lambright, we look at the official as Gibbs was in there. I think they held. I tend to agree. You go by the marker, he didn't like make it. That, where that ball is positioned. Short by six inches. Had the third and short and ran the, the straight dive, get the fourth and short, and try it again. The front people, Jason Fist, the nose guard, nice job by Stanford to stop the move. They held. They did hold. Big lift for Stanford. We talked about the emotion coming into this game and how the players are high, the crowd is high. But emotion doesn't get it done. You can see right here, linebackers are going to shoot the gaps. Nothing fancy. Nobody picks him up. Coy Gibbs. Coy Gibbs comes in and makes the play. So the Washington defense comes on, and Coy Gibbs is the man of the hour as Steve Stenstrom brings on the Stanford Cardinal offense. Ellery Roberts, good experience. Allen at fullback. Justin Armour is only veteran wide receiver. Tony Klein at tight end. Dittman leads this group of a mixture of veterans like Kavanaugh and Hoyam with newcomers Waters and Bucky at the guards. Seth Dittman, one of five starters at the left tackle last year. First and 10 from the 24. Stentrum going deep right off the bat. And defended by Russell Hairston. The receiver, Mark Harris. Steve Hoffman returns to nose tackle along with DeMarco Farr and Jamal Fontaine. Fontaine, one of the captains. And the linebackers, Hillary Butler. Speed is his biggest weapon. Andy Mason, another one of the captains. Donovan Schmidt getting his first start. 
with Hairston beating out Josh Moore at one of the corners. Second down and 10 from the 24. Boom. Ellery Roberts does well to get back to the line of scrimmage. Steve Hoffman, one of the first there, along with DeMarco Farr. Penetration into the offensive backfield, the hallmark of this Husky defense over the last few years under still defensive coordinator Jim Lambright. That time, DeMarco Farr lays a lick and gets Ellery Roberts off his path, then gets lots of help. No gain. It'll be third down, actually, in 11. Seth Dittman, left tackle, busy job today. They show blitz, they back off, laid across. Back over to the first two for the first down, fumble! Husky ball, Tony Klein, the receiver. Andy Mason, one of the guys that hit him, and Donovan Smith. We'll wait and see, he may have recovered. Lewis Jones, a host of Huskies in there, Russell Hairston. We believe brought it in. Klein had the first down. Third and 11, good coverage downfield. Lots of time for Stenstrom, drops it off to Tony Klein. As you said, Don, they get the first down. Russell Hairston, textbook football. Or excuse me, no, that is Russell Hairston. Yeah, 25s and 26s look alike. <laughs> big crowd, Huskies get a big break early. Try to take advantage. So it's first and 10 on the 35. Laying it off to Matt Jones. Jones, oh, gets through for a first down. Knocked out of bounds by Kevin Garnett, the free safety. Jim Lambright in his debut. See a look at the fiery nature of Jim Lambright. Penalty flag on the field, probably the cause. It's like a clipping penalty against the Huskies, going to bring that one back. Jim Lambright doing what he does best and has done for 16 years, the defensive coordinator. He's a holding on to those duties even though he's now assumed some offensive responsibility obviously as well. Clipping on the offense, 15 yards and forced from the spot of the foul, first down. Four yard penalty in effect. Okay. So it'll be first and 14 on the clipping penalty. Jim Lambright hopes the trend continues of all the new head coaches at Washington in their debuts, 14 of the 21 have won their first game. He's the 22nd. You look at the flip side of that over the Stanford side in opening games. They've lost six season openers in a row. Four of them have been conference games. They'd like to start off 1 0 oh instead of 0 oh 1. Jason Shelley just happy to be back on the field. Left leg apparently not too bad. The pitch. Hoffman around the corner gets past Bryant. Down to the 35 yard line. Speed on the outside is so very important. 12 yard gain, two yards short of the first down. Garnett and Vaughn Bryant finally get him out of bounds. That time, a better job by Damon Heward of holding the ball until the defender came to him so that one man can't defend both players. And they really committed Make to Matt pitch. Jones, didn't they? Make the pitch, get that ball outside to a guy like Napoleon Kaufman. Second down and five. It was not first and 14. Obviously, first and 17. They go the other direction. has got room. First down. And Heward wisely holds on to the ball. Nice block and nice lead by Jim Novell, the center. Damon Heward, not the fastest guy in the world, but he's got pretty good speed. And he's 6'4", 220 pounds. Big enough that he doesn't have to outrun everybody. Kevin Garnett with the tackle on the debuting quarterback. Yes. Well, that goes back a long ways. 1978, a 10-7 loss to UCLA. Kenny easily blocks a punt for a touchdown. In the rain. First and 10 on the 23-yard line. Janoski goes in motion. Student body right. Kaufman, short game. This time, a little better penetration by the people on the left. Kevin Garnett again coming up. He's a good ball player. We've mentioned his name a lot at the free safety for Stanford. He was recruited as a running back and then made the switch in 91. Stanford has a number of players that were offensive players at one time. Now defensive players 
That Stanford offensive history so strong, they get people to commit to come here as, as wide receivers and running backs and quarterbacks and turn them into something else later. One wide receiver to the left side. They go to Jones, short game. As it gets a little tougher down in the red zone. 8-17 remaining in the first quarter. A lot of action. No points so far. Matt Jones, one of the captains on this offense, along with Jim Navelle, the center. Theron Hill comes in again. Here comes Eric Bjornsson as a wide receiver. That's got to give defensive coordinators nightmares. <laughs> you want to make sure and know where Eric Bjornsson lines up. They're thinking about reverse passes, pitch passes, pitch passes. Third and four. Three wide receivers to the left with Kaufman behind him. Tough decision that time. Good defense by Stanford. Spread it out to the left, go option right, and a lot of white jerseys waiting. A good decision by Damon Heward not to pitch the ball. Jason Fisk on the tackle. He's the nose guard. Gray day, no sunshine, as expected. Everybody trying to have a Labor Day weekend picnic. Won't have to worry about sunburn so far. So on fourth down, it's going to be a 32 yard. Let's make it a 33 yard attempt by Hanson. His longest last year was 42. 33 yard attempt. Plenty of boot. And he's one for one. For 1993, and the Huskies take a four, first quarter lead as Bino Bryant tacks it over with Kaufman and Jason. Damon, you are talking it over with, I'm sure, Jeff Woodruff, the offensive coordinator upstairs. He's done well, the young lad. As Travis Hansen comes up with a 32-yard field goal and gives Washington its first lead of the season. Greg Camella. Check it. That's Mike Mitchell. Pure freshman. Highly regarded tailback out of Phoenix. Decides to stay there as Stenstrom comes back out. Not the best opening drive offensively for Stanford. They tried for the big play on the first play. And then the turnover, the fumble by Tony Klein after having first down yardage. So far, Washington with, in terms of time, too, well ahead. Keep in mind, Stanford dodged the bullet somewhat after that fumble, only a three-pointer. And they did have the first down. Until Klein fumbled. Boom! Donovan Smith. Man who had only four tackles all last year comes up with a boomer in 93. It makes you think that maybe somebody missed an assignment when a guy right at the point of attack gets a full running start at your running back, the junior out of Palm Springs, getting his first start. Good program player. One of those Huskies that's a great athlete, has good abilities it just hasn't been able to see the field because of the great players they've had here the last couple of years Roberts with two carries for a total of minus five yards second down and 15 they get it out to their tight end breaks away I think he stepped out of bounds he did on the 26 or he would have gotten big time yardage Bill Walsh's offense is geared towards mismatches and making people cover zones they don't want to have to cover that time inside linebacker Steve Springstead is chasing the tight end so Springstead has a long way to go Klein turns the corner a little bit Don James always said Bill Walsh is very good at finding the pressure points making you do things you don't want to do third down and four from the 26 wide receiver each side Looks across the middle. Almost by Hillary Butler. 
Are they saying he caught it? They're talking it over. The discussion as to whether the ball was caught. Klein does get off the ground with the ball. <laughs> but what happened between contact and standing up? Good pressure by the Husky defense. Incomplete. Incomplete. Husky defense is held on third and four. Nice job by Hillary Butler of being in the way. It's got Not a, the greatest decision by Stenston. Well, again, that's that Husky pressure makes you make decisions in a hurry. Three and out for the Husky defense. Aaron Mills back to punt. Low, wobbly. Hoffman from the 36. Gets to the picket fence. And up to midfield at the 50. Knocked out of bounds by number nine for Stanford, Elisle Swinton. We'll return right after this. A 32 yard field goal in the first quarter. That's it for Travis Hansen and the Huskies so far. Five and a half minutes to go. In the debut for Damon Hewitt at quarterback. Like Chuck Nelson said, a man born to be a QB, and that is him. His father in attendance, Mike Hewitt, had coached at Puyallup High School here in the Puget Sound area. And he's going to go deep, and he's got a man, Janoski. No! It wasn't Janoski, it was Shelley. Both of them were open. In fact, Janoski was wide open. As he tried to go deep against Ellis, well and Shelley, thrown, the intended receiver. Well thrown ball, the first chance for Damon Hewer to really air it out. <laughs> the fist, you see that? So we're all right. We're going to be there. So both, far, three of five, 19 yards, Chuck. Both Jason Shelley and Dave Janoski running deep routes, both with a little bit of separation. Second down and ten, ball right at the 50. Wide receiver to each side, Kaufman. Hodges right. You know, Jason, or rather, yes, Jason Fist, the nose guard, did a great job of just stuffing things in there and really didn't uh, give that many opportunities to Kaufman. Well, when you're playing nose tackle, the majority of your job is not necessarily to make tackles and make plays, it's to make piles. And he did very well. Toby Norwood with that tackle, but you take can up, thank the guys up front who did it. Take up a lot of blockers and free free those linebackers to run and make plays. Kaufman, nine carries, 50 yards, third down and five. Cuts inside, intended for Janoski, no flag. As again, they go against Kwame Ellis. A very aggressive play by Kwame Ellis on both the deep ball to Shelley and then on that post route. Ellis is showing us something. He's the man who replaced Darian Gordon, who was the first round draft choice for San Diego. And Janoski got a little crowd at that time trying to catch the inside slant. Coming out is John Wardell, number 16, the punter for Washington, now a senior. Averaged over 38 yards last year with a long of 65 and back to receive is number 11. Who is a newcomer? They've made some last minute switches here. Number 11 is Leroy Pruitt, a backup wide receiver. Going to the right corner. And the fair catch by Pruitt at the 16 yard line. Call it the 17. Timeout on the field. We'll be back after that 33 yard punt. Four forty remaining in the first quarter. I think it's safe to say the emotions are now dying down, and it's just basic college football. As Bill Walsh and the Cardinal have weathered the initial emotional storm and wave of the Huskies and trail only three to nothing. First and ten. Roberts, by far his biggest run of the day, as he gets up for the first down to the twenty-seven yard line. Brought down by Hillary Butler. Roberts was in minus yardage until that carry. Nice job by the up front people of Stanford of keeping the inside people out. Just get Roberts out there where those wide receivers and defensive back roam. And when you've got 215 pounds running, pick up some steam. It's Monty Clark behind Bill Walsh, new assistant coach, former head coach of the 49ers and Detroit Lions. Yeah. 
steps from pressure. Hello, Jamal Fontaine. He's the man who knocked Stenstrom out of the game in 92. Three quarterback sacks for Fontaine last year, one in 93. If there this. was anyone who said he wants to channel his emotion and frustration, it was this young man, the senior co-captain. Provided some good leadership. Who'd he beat? He's Let's see. Probably Seth Dittman on that left outside, the yep. left tackle. As you said, Don, they started five people in that position. It's probably the most important position in pass protection in that offensive line. It's the quarterback's blind side. Second down. Oh, he got him again. Two for two. And a flag goes down in the backfield. I don't know. Some talking, maybe. That's all it could possibly be, a late flag. Jamal Fontaine, after the sack, stands up with both arms in the air, and they throw a flag. Personal foul on the defense. It had to be something he said because something. it wasn't what he did. Well, a personal foul would be a physical contact foul. Stenstrom popped up right after the play, maybe took another shot. See, see right there. Oh, that Seth might have been Dittman. DeMarco Farr when he came in. So Seth Dittman on the outside just gets flat beat underneath by Jamal Fontaine. Yeah, yep. DeMarco Farr with the, with the plant. That's a close after call. After the play. It's close, but I can see why they threw it. That gives Stanford a first down and moves the ball up to the 30-yard line. Fontaine is having lunch right now. Dittman is wondering what planet he's on. He's been burned twice. At this pace, they're going to go through at least two left tackles. And there's Mr. Dittman. He's got that trout look in his eyes. First and ten. Across the middle, Roberts. About six yards and a nice hit across the middle by Steve Springstead and Hillary Butler. Hillary Roberts is actually in his sixth year of college football. Started his college career at Miami. Transferred to Stanford. Came on last year towards the end of the year as a real force in the conference. Had 381 yards rushing in his last four games last year. Second and four, Butler again, or excuse me, DeMarco Farr on Roberts again. Nothing. He may have lost a yard. DeMarco with those 44 tackles last year, ten and a half tackles for loss. And Don James and Carroll watch on. Wonder what he's thinking right now. Yeah, we may find out later if he joins us in the booth. Four carries, three yards net for Roberts today. Don James has been very relaxed. Since his retirement today, his, Not that first, man. his first day, <laughs> his first day as a non-coach in a long time. Third down and six. David Shaw wide to the right side, little bootleg, looking across the middle, shuffles the feed almost by Justin Armour, number 80, who is by far their best wide receiver. He led the team in touchdown receptions last year with seven, and in per catch average yardage of 17. Stenstrom, three of six, 31 yards so far, and it's time to punt. Husky defense responds well after the personal foul penalty. Leon Neal back to return the punt. Napoleon Kaufman, with no Bean O'Brien, Napoleon Kaufman's going to have to take his rest where he can get it. Neal from the 16. If he can get outside. Still fighting up to the 30 yard line. Leon Neal, who is the third string tailback, just a sophomore out of Long Beach. A 15 yard gain. Jamal Fontaine sitting down. Boy, did he do the damage on that series of Springstead and DeMarco Farr and Butler. Those four all involved in key plays. By the way, a 50-yard punt by Aaron Mills that last time for Stanford. First and 10 on the Husky 32-yard line as Janowski goes in motion to the right. With the delay, Kaufman. Oh, what a move. Oh, he gets up to 45 and down at the 46. I got to tell you, a lot of that was sheer talent by number eight. He looks so much more relaxed on the field than he did in his first couple of years as a Husky. He's still picking his spots and using his speed, but 
Remember a couple years ago, those feet weren't on the ground very often to make those cuts. Did you see Bruner's block? Downfield blocking the key to any long gain. He is now past, that being this man, Napoleon Kaufman, past Kyle Stevens as the 10th all-time leading rusher at Washington. First and 10 from the 46. Leon Neal this time. Serving as Chuck mentioned, fumble. Looks like, well, we'll wait and see. Pearson had a shot at it, but it looks like Stanford has it. Let's wait and see. One referee. Boy, we got arms going everywhere, and it looks like it'll be Husky ball. Okay, second down, they say that the ground <laughs> caused the fumble. Lean out. It's okay. I know, I know, I know. I dropped it. I tell you, I won't do it again. If there's one thing in this program that will get you on the bench faster than fumbling, I don't know what it is. Yeah, there's there's the wrath of Jim Lambright. <laughs> Whoa, baby. He's trying to be positive. And there's the man who normally would be playing out there. <laughs> Bino's helping him out. That's okay. Hey, don't worry, Leon. It's okay. I've fumbled a couple times. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, with the suspensions of Krolik and Brian, Jim Lambright says we're going to turn them into coaches for the week. Second and five. Ewart playing it safe and gets it outside beyond Janowski and the defender. He was well covered. On Brian, a veteran back there, has started 23 games for this Cardinal defense. And the only returning starter in the secondary against this young puppy, let's face it, Janowski. Janowski had a great spring, then got hurt, and we didn't get to see him in the spring game. It's a player they're looking to step forward, talking about not a lot of depth at that wide receiver position. Somebody's going to have to make some plays out of nowhere. Third down and five as he comes to the left side. Little play action, and they're not on the same page that time. Janowski pulled up rather than going start, and a wide receiver in his first start as well. Hewitt is three of 18 seconds left here in the first quarter. So many decisions are made on the fly. Do I curl it inside, curl it outside, take it to the sideline, or take it deep? Pruitt back to receive as Werdell will punt from his own 38. High spiral. Nice hang time at the 15 to 14 as Pruitt calls the fair catch. So if nothing else, it has been a victory for Washington in terms of field position. They have kept Stanford in their own red zone starting their series on just about every occasion. Eight seconds left in the first quarter. Quarterbacks don't like it when they get their instructions from the coach and have a 50 yard jog to get into the huddle. Tim Lambright getting his defensive charges ready to go. See if Jamal Fontaine can get two more sacks in this series. So far I'm impressed with that defensive front line of Washington. They're going against one of the veteran offensive lines in the Pac-10. First and 10 from the 14 yard line. Last play of the first quarter. A little quick hitter by the fullback. Ethan Allen, who is getting his first start. And the first quarter is history. It's in the books for 93. And the Huskies come out on top by the score of 3 to nothing. A three to nothing lead for the Washington Huskies here at Husky Stadium as they kick off the 93 season under new head coach Jim Lambright. The numbers in the first quarter overwhelmingly in the favor of the Washington Huskies and we will get to those in a moment but almost two to one in time of possession. And Stanford is still trying to get out of the minus category in rushing. Defensive line for Washington putting pressure on the quarterback also doing a good job of penetrating to disrupt the rushing game here we go minus eight yards and the time of possession 930 to five and a half four minutes more and total yards overwhelmingly to the side of Washington throwing it outside Allen trying to get around Andy Mason forget it no gain as the outside linebacker and co-captain Andy Mason, the baseball player for the Everett Giants. Yeah, spent the summer in the A-League Rookie League Baseball. Made the nice move. Sam Lambright, happy to have him back hitting running backs instead of curveballs. You talk about somebody you can move. Here he is at 6'2", 230, and he led the team in vertical leap. 
6'2", 230, and he jumped 35 inches vertically. Tremendous athlete. 35 inches. Oh! Third down and nine. Across the middle, the slant might get a flag. Let's see. Yes, we do. Lawyer Malloy was awfully close. Slant route to Justin Armour. Justin Armour is six foot six. Once he gets position inside you, he's not going to give it up. A very obvious call that time Wait on Reggie Reeser. To Reggie Reeser, I apologize. It looked like a nine instead of a four. His defensive backs read the quarterback start to close. You can see that back arm. Yeah, the front arm makes a nice play, but that back arm. Now he's there early. Definitely through the flag. Reggie, who switched his number to four for this year, got a lot of time playing time last year, especially in the late going. Had those three solo tackles against Michigan in the Rose Bowl, playing for the injured Walter Bailey. Little too close that time. As it brings up first and ten on the automatic first down. Roberts trying to go outside. You're not going to do that with these linebackers. Team speed is the key to these Huskies. One thing about those narrower hash marks, speed is even that much more important because the field has effectively become wider from hash mark to sideline. Hillary Butler that time in on the kill, but yeah, it's more and more like the NFL game when you start narrowing those hash marks. So it's second down and almost nine for the veteran Steve Stenstrom had his wrist injured badly here last year. Play action trying to get to his veteran he does armor good to the 43 yard line and a first down for Stanford. Justin armor player of the year in Colorado in basketball and football and has really become the staple for receivers here at Stanford average 17 yards a reception last year 17 yards on that one Reggie <laughs> Reeser man's consistent <laughs> put in a one on one situation Huskies blitzed Rover back Lewis Jones corners are one on one and that's tough because he is a big man at 6 6 to 15 there he is. They moved him to tight end for the spring and back to wide receiver for the fall. First and ten deep drop back. Fontaine closes in and almost picked off by the lawyer Malloy. Almost said sophomore, but no, he is a redshirt freshman after that injury last year, the broken foot. Once again, Stenstrom has time, has time, and then here comes Jamal Fontaine. I gotta throw it to somebody. Where's where's my man, Justin Armour? Lawyer Malloy steps in front. Excuse me, Tony Klein. Going for Klein, yeah. Lawyer Malloy came in as a true freshman last year and was very impressive in his first couple of weeks of fall practice. Hurt his ankle badly, missed the entire year. He will definitely see a lot of playing time in '93. Second down and ten from the 44 of Stanford. Roberts again, and he attracts a big crowd. Jamal Fontaine closed in. I thought that was him. I couldn't believe he got there that quickly. Coming down from the outside on the slant, just kept coming. Nice read by the senior as Roberts, who had 627 yards overall last year, averaged 4.8 yards per, and Jim Lambright kicks off the 104th year of football here in Seattle for the Huskies. Roberts, six carries. Well, he's up to nine yards now. And they're at an even zero for rushing yardage in the game. Third down and six. Throw it again. Wide open. Armor. First down. Stanford down to the 37 yard line as he is brought down by Steve Springstead and Lewis Jones. Stenstrom on a bit of a roll now, along with Justin Armor. Two ways to play defense against the pass. You either send a lot of people hoping to put pressure on the quarterback and cover one on one, or you don't put a lot of pressure on the quarterback and drop everybody off in coverage into the zones. That time, Stenstrom and Armour just find the hole in the zone. Good job by the front people, too, for Stanford. First and 10 from the 37 of Washington. About as far as they've come into Husky territory. They try to go outside on the late. I can't even call it a reverse, really, as number 12, Brian Manning, a flanker, carries. But read nicely by Andy Mason. 
took too long to develop. Well, you've got seniors on the outside, guys that aren't going to fall for those kind of things, and then you've got speed on those seniors. Even if they do fall for it, they've got the speed <laughs> to make up for it. But not a bad play to make. But when you see a Stanford. quarterback standing there with your back to the off line of scrimmage that long, you got to think something strange is going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. To, the purpose of that basically is to try to get these guys to stay home so maybe they don't pursue like Jamal Fontaine did on that coming down the line play. Second down and nine, too much time. Gets complete for the first down as Springstead makes the tackle on Mark Harris. Harris, a junior transfer from Brigham City, Utah, and Rick's Junior College. Stenstrom with the first down. And by far the best threat by Stanford, and it has come through the air. Good job by the offensive line of the Cardinal keeping pressure off of Stenstrom. Wide receivers finding open holes. Bill Walsh right now has got to feel awfully good. Monty Clark too. Bill Walsh has retained what he has done with the 49ers where basically they have a series of plays that they want to run early in the ball game to find out how the defense is going to react. And then we use the ones that we think are going to work. They're certainly finding their stride. Stenstrom now 7 of 11. As he looks at first and ten from the Husky, 24. Audible. Here's the noise that drove them crazy last year, but they have come in prepared here in 93. The slant, nice play. First down to Justin Armour. Down to the ten yard line, and what an audible as Stenstrom finds Armour. So it's first and goal from the ten. All right on the ten yard line. Wide to the right side is David Shaw. Armor to the short side of the field, the bottom of your screen. Stenstrom, not much heat on him lately. They go to Roberts, who gets about three to the seven as Steve Springstead was in there, along with Andy Mason. Ball right on the 10 is tough for an offense. You don't have enough field to run a whole lot of passing routes, but you've also got to go 10 yards. No first down. You've got to get it in the end zone, so the running game is tough. Reeser, by the way, number four, stands at only 5'10. When he goes against Justin Armour, who's at 6'6, huge height advantage for the Stanford Cardinal. A timeout's been called by Stanford with 10'26 remaining here in the first half. And right now, it is strength of Stanford against Washington's weakness, if there's such a thing, in terms of the youngsters on the defense for Washington and the experience for the Cardinal on O. The strength of Washington is in its up front people on defense. If those up front people aren't putting pressure on the quarterback, then the onus does fall on the coverage people. Stay Jim Lambright handling the talking right now, it looks like, to his defense. As you said earlier, Chuck, he's still the defensive coordinator, and he splits some of the duties with Randy Hart and Chris Torman. Jim Lamb right down on the sideline for the first time in 15 years as defensive coordinator. He was upstairs in the coaching booth. Second down and goal from the seven yard line as DeMarco Farr looks over the Stanford offensive huddle. The noise. One receiver left. Looks outside for the corner and goes for his tallest receiver, Justin Armour, as Russell Hairston was defending. Everybody going which way on that play? That's the idea is to get everybody going which way and then throw Mr. Six Foot Six over there against those 5'10, 5'11 DBs and kind of throw it in the air. You know, you it's think not about that, dog. You're talking about 5'10 versus 6'6. Six, six. You're looking at eight inches. Oh, yeah. That's, that's not too bad. Plus, he's quick. That being uh, just an art. He's an athlete at 6'6. Six, six. Stanford basketball team was so beat up with injuries last year. Justin went out and volunteered to play, and he played on the squad. Third and goal. This is the big one. From the seventh. Shaw in motion. Across the middle. Roberts. Touchdown, Stanford. They spread it out and brought the running back across the middle for six. Run people to the corner, then bring the outside guy back underneath. Oh, 
the emotion now. Whose see, side is it on? See two tight ends, and then David Shaw goes in motion out into the flat. The tight end on the left side runs also out to the flat, and then Ellery Roberts just swings it back around the outside over the middle. Two men clear out. You see right there that the strong safety bumps him along and then doesn't come pick up the new guy. And the kick by Abrams is good. And Stanford takes the lead here in the second quarter with 10 17 remaining. It is 7 to 3, Stanford. Back to Husky Stadium where Stanford has scored the first touchdown of the game and of the year in this contest 86 yards. What's interesting though is I look at the scoreboard and the overall statistics Stanford still has only one net yard rushing this drive they go 86 they eat up 451 and the seven yard touchdown pass to Ellery Roberts coming in and getting past Steve Springsteen one yard rushing 97 passing. Kaufman and Neal now Kaufman trying to get outside and up to the 23 yard line Jim Lambright now talking personally with his defense 20 yard return for Kaufman as Lambright turns it over now to Jeff Woodruff the offensive coordinator to take care of matters Darrow and Chambers back up linebackers. Obviously going through the air is what's causing the Huskies problems. 97 yards passing, one yard rushing for Stanford. And 86 of those 97 coming in the last drive. A chain repair is required. The 10 yard chain on the far side of the field. Damon Heward has looked pretty good. And here's the old maestro himself, Steve Stenstrom. I can remember when he came in a couple of years ago as a youngster and has been well ever since. First and ten, they go to Kaufman, trying to bust it loose. Gets into the secondary and up to the 34-yard line. Let's see where they mark it. Should be good for a first down. Kevin Darnett lays the blow on Kaufman. Boy, Kaufman does a good job of just getting the ball and getting on the backside of Andrew Peterson. He goes into a pile and comes out. He goes into another pile and comes out. And if he can come through that pile, nothing but open season. Credit Richard Thomas with a good block on the linebacker Hall as well as Peterson on the inside first and ten now on the 34 seventy six yards for Kaufman only in the first half throwing Jason Shelley you got to hold on to that ball Jason got a little case of the alligator arms on that one his arms Kwame Ellis defending couldn't get him too far away from his body he was very aware of the safety inside closing on him. Can't drop that one. It's that simple at this level. Nope. Second down and 10 for Washington. Theron Hill comes in. Ernie Conwell goes out. The backup tight end. Check off by Damon Heward. Puts the ball in the position to be caught. Nice play by the young quarterback. Second and 10 as Hill goes in motion. Oh, how did he slice through there? Close to a first down as he's brought down by John Sims, the outside linebacker. Oh, my goodness. He is now past Rick Finney to become the number nine all time rusher at Washington. He's past Kyle Stevens and Rick Finney today alone. He's up to 90 yards, close to it already. He's already past Bean O'Brien. <laughs> we talked about the Stanford lack of balance one yard rushing 97 yards passing Washington right now 111 yards rushing 18 through the air and you got to get it in the end zone doesn't matter first and ten there's some movement okay. obviously Stanford coming offside Damon Heward started to pull away yes yeah, 
see we'll if see who they they're going to blame who's indicted <laughs> and who is convicted. Yeah, offense. they yeah. got him. Offense. Yep, they did. <laughs> Oftentimes, the quarterback will forget the snap count. You're running through numbers, looking at the defense, or seeing defensive linemen charging yep. at you too. Defensive people moving around. You're thinking about so many other things that the fundamental thing sometimes gets lost. Bill Walsh with a lead, seven to three, with nine minutes to go in the first half. Look at this. Hill goes in motion on first and 15. Defense pretty good on Kaufman this time. One of the first in there. I know Tyrone Parker did a good job along with Fisk and David Carter, the whole front line. Penetration by Tommy Connect, a strong safety, forcing Napoleon Kaufman to cut it back inside so that the Parkers and Fisks can make plays. Washington came into this game ranked 12th by the AP in the first poll of the year. Stanford 15th. So there's a lot of respect for this Stanford team coming into the 93 season. They had one of the top four recruiting classes in the country last year. Many of which will play as Mark Bruner, the tight end, gets his first catch of the year. Bruner with 21 last season. Ten yard gain. Mark Hatzenbuehler, a backup linebacker in there on the tackle. Tight end, one of the strengths of this Husky offense, as you said, Mark Bruner, 21 catches last year, the number two receiver in terms of number of receptions. Ernie Conwell, the backup tight end, also very well regarded. Bruner had a great game, made his freshman debut against Stanford in 91 down in Palo Alto. Fewer to throw on third and three, gets it away just in time. Janowski down to the 34 yard line and a first down. David Heward felt the pressure. He knew people were coming. Don Poyer also knew people were coming. <laughs> Get out of there. Third and three. <laughs> nice job by Janoski. Runs a little waggle route where he comes downfield, makes a read, and takes it to the outside. Pressure comes a little bit late on Heward. Ball well delivered. Von Bryant beaten. First and 10 from the 34. Breaks free. Down to the 12 yard line, Napoleon Kaufman. Brought down by John Sims. Again, they've seen a lot of each other. Oh, is he looking sweet in 93 or what? Napoleon. 22 yards, Chuck. Napoleon catching it, running with it. Get the ball to him as many ways, as many times as you can. You can see he just once again gets into the pile and at only 5'9, 175, comes out the other side. Just starts to get into his stride when John Sims gets to him from behind. Time for a break. Already 110 yards here in the first half. Now first and 10 from the 12. Leon Neal and nothing doing. David Hewer that time failing to recognize the stunt right into that area of attack by the Stanford defense. <laughs> Whole lot of bodies in there. <laughs> David Carter, one of them. Front three people leading the charge. Von Bryant, originally an offensive player, got a real tough lesson in 1991 as Mario Bailey just about screwed him into the ground for a touchdown near the end of the first half down in Stanford country as the Huskies went on to win it big 42 to 7. Second down and nine. And Neal again inside the 10 to the eight yard line. Not sure what they're trying to do. Two, two fairly conservative running plays Boy. in a row. You see Napoleon Kaufman. So that's enough of that. Goodness <laughs> sakes alive. I'm coming back in. Let me take matters into my hands here. If we're going to do that. I might as well be carrying the pigskin. Leon Neal, a good, a good young player. That time didn't stick with his fullback through the hole. Theron Hill goes out. Tom Gallagher out of Puyallup, one of those big veteran horses up front. Time for them to go to work. Earn that scholarship right now. Third down and seven. They need to get to the two for a first. Bootleg. A lot of time. No receiver. Tough pass. Touchdown, Washington. Oh, a frozen rope to Mark Bruner. Only his second touchdown in his career. The other in a Rose Bowl in 92. 
Chuck, that's one of the finest passes I've seen in a long time. You will see something here that separates good quarterbacks from great quarterbacks. David Hewitt finds some time and buys some time after the rollout and knows that his receiver is looking at him and the defender, Kevin Garnett, has his back turned and is un will be unable to make the play. Hanson for the extra point. Flag down before they can even boot the ball. <laughs> and they'll back it up on the Huskies. Jim Lambright's offense has responded to that 86 yard drive by Stanford, which gave them the lead 7 to 3. Nice response quite a bit by that man too who now has 110 yards in the first half his best game was 208 last year against California that record is definitely in trouble today over a thousand yards for the year a thousand forty five Hanson's kick this time up and he is good five yards farther back as Eric Bjornsson holds the Huskies with five twenty three remaining regain the lead. 10 to 7. About five and a half minutes to go. There's the man who caught his second career touchdown for the Huskies, Mark Bruner. This has been a, tell me, Perry and thrust. Perry and thrust kind of game. 86 yard drive for Stanford. Now a 77 yard drive for the Huskies. And the nine yard reception. You stick me, I'll stick you. Heward. And Jason Crabb with the kickoff. It goes to Camella. It's Mitchell as he carries it up to the 30 yard line. Mitchell, I'd really like to see him get out there and run from the line of scrimmage for Bill Walsh. Considered to be one of the one or two top running back recruits out of high school last year. 26 yard return for Mitchell. Pure freshman. What a way to get your first taste of college football and come into Husky Stadium and go against Lambright's Huskies and 72,000 fans. Lambright's defense will get a chance to take the adjustments that Lambright has made on the sidelines and take them onto the field. He doesn't like those 13 play drives against his squad. First to 10, they go to Ethan Allen. Good yardage as he gets to the 36 yard line. Six yard gain. It'll be second down and four. 5 11 remaining here in the first half. After a quiet first quarter, second quarter looks more like a track meet. The offenses of these two teams considered to be the better side of the ball for each of them. Armour and Shaw go to the right side for Stenstrom at quarterback. Still has it. Mason, down he goes. You could see the look on Stenstrom. I'm doing a play action, and it's doing me absolutely no good. <laughs> I'm wasting my time. Yes, why am I faking? And he's still down. Last year, Steve Stenstrom knocked out in the second quarter by Jamal Fontaine. Boy, this crowd is hungry for raw meat. Mark Butterfield, the backup quarterback, Deja vu for him. Hate to see anybody get hurt. This is a Stanford offense that gave up 10 sacks to the Huskies last year. That is three today. You can see Andy May. Steve Stenstrom is supposed to roll the other way. He doesn't even bother. He says, I'm just going to tuck it and take my lick. Andy Mason has been moved to outside linebacker, so he is standing up a lot, but he is still coming a lot. Right there, the right shoulder gets drove, driven into the ground by the 230 pounds of Andy Mason. That AstroTurf doesn't give much, and when you've got your body weight and the defender's body weight sticking it in there, you got guys like Mark Butterfield getting their chance to play. Mark is a junior out of Antioch, California. He did the same thing last year. He came in for the injured Stenstrom. However, he's only down three this time and not 30. Third down and 10. Here they come. Whoa, DeMarco Farr from the front. 
Kilpatrick and Mason from the outside. Quarterback is taught to step up into the pocket when the pressure comes from the outside, but the pocket was filled by DeMarco Farr. Can you imagine standing on the sidelines, not warmed up, and you get hit by those three trucks? Well, here come the outside people. Kilpatrick, the rover, is coming. Mason, the weak side linebacker, is coming. And DeMarco Farr steps right up the middle and absolutely dusts Ryan Waters. And Butterfield <laughs> knows what Steve Stenstrom has gone through. Aaron Mills, number three seven, back on his own ten. Ooh, the rush was on. Nice punt, low, but he got it away pretty well. Leon Neal was back to receive, and it's a husky bounce coming to rest at the 39. As Demarco Farr had the freeway all to himself on that last sack. As we have 348 remaining, Eric Bjornson now is in at quarterback, replacing Damon Heward. They said they would do this probably in the second quarter. As he keeps to the right side and is brought down near the 43 yard line, make it 44. Gain of four for uh, Eric. Much as they have over the last couple of years with Mark Brunell and Billy Hobart. When you have two quality quarterbacks, the philosophy of both Don James and now apparently Jim Lambright is to get those quarterbacks some playing time in something other than mop-up time. Second down and six, three-point lead for the Huskies. Napoleon, if he can stay up, he does. First down, tries to get around. <laughs> is that a fumble? Let's wait and see. Should have been down. Yes. The official dropped the beanbag, showing it's down John Sims and Kevin Garnett in there trying to find the ball after he was tackled Kaufman he's unbelievable and Chuck he, he appears to be doing something we haven't seen before he's able to when he gets in the crowd to put his head down and use his head and shoulders and drive better where he was cute in the past he's very strong for 175 pounds as I said he's, he's picking his spots and using his speed. He doesn't look as nervous and as jittery. He, no. waits, he waits, 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 and then uses his speed. And explodes. First and ten. Yortson wants to lay it off, gets it over to Neal into Stanford territory and down to the 45 yard line of the Cardinal. Stopped by Coy Gibbs, the right inside linebacker. Nice first down play. Little play action, pick up three yards. 2.30 remaining, clock running, first half. Huskies with a chance to get some more on the board. Second down and seven from the 45 of Stanford. Jones in the backfield at fullback. Shelley in motion. McNeil missed the count. He had to find out, and there's the penalty flag up in the air. I think Leon's having a tough time today. Uh, I think Leon was the least of their problems on that time. Jason Shelley was not in motion. Jason Shelley was lined up on the wrong side of the field. By the time he ran over to the other side, tried to motion to Ron Hill farther out. Got guys jumping all over the place. Well, it looked like Leon might have been going up trying to get the count from <laughs> Matt Jones, possibly. And then Jason, as you say, was moving. Those things will happen when you have inexperienced players. Fontaine was having his way with Seth Dittman for a while, the left tackle of Stanford when he had two sacks in a row. Very focused young man. One of the co-captains, probably one of the quickest and hardest hitting players on this team. And is majoring in construction engineering. Minute 52 remaining here, first half. Second down and 12 after the penalty. Ooh, bullet. DJ McCarthy out of bounds and a first down. Clock stops a minute 43 as DJ gets the reception. McCarthy, that is his first catch as a Husky. Just he is a senior out of Boca Raton, Florida. 
and was originally a walk on but he has stuck with it in fact when I was doing the Seahawks during preseason he was out there at camp at least two or three practices watching the receivers trying to learn football junkie likes to be around the game gain of seven third down in five bullet oh Janowski a little behind him but catchable a tough play with all your momentum going towards the middle of the field to turn back to the outside and Bjornsson misjudging the speed of Dave Janowski a little bit John Wardell comes back to punt his longest in the preseason or in training camp was 53 yards in the two scrimmages before the 93 season as Pruitt is back to catch. John Wardell back in front of one eight here. 65 yarder last year. He has a lot of leg strength. Not going to need it right here. Ball in the 42. His goal is to get it outside the hash and land it on the 10. He won't go into the end zone. And the fair catch called at the 13 yard line. Three yards off, not bad. Not bad at all. So Pruitt, by catching that ball, puts his offense back on actually the 14 with a minute 31 to work with. As Eric Bjornson will get at least one or two series at quarterback as well as play wide receiver. Conferring with his receiver, intended receiver that time, Janowski. Stenstrom back in the game after taking that shot to his right shoulder. Right now ball control is awfully important. They don't want to have a ball mishandled by a quarterback when you're on your own 13. Toss sweep Ellery Roberts. Gets around Russell Hairston and good yardage up to the 20 yard line. Good for about six. Also does a good job of getting out of bounds and stopping the clock. A five second. Six yard sweep. Minute 26 to go. 96 total yards for the Cardinals so far. They're back into the minus territory for rushing yardage at minus seven. Total yards 96. Washington total yards 214. Yet they lead by only three. Remember, sacks count as rushing yards. That's why right. they're still negative. All right. Second down and four. The quick handoff to Allen. And he is met head on with, I believe, Steve Hoffman. And a flag down. You saw that at home. May have been in the wrapping up. Did we grab a face the mask? Face mask was the, <laughs> one did. of the items that got got wrapped. The minute 20 that stops the clock as well as the yardage. So you turn a, a clock running play into. Who was that masked man? He's just showing up everywhere. Bill wore those getting off the plane in Seattle. I thought he might wear them walking into the stadium just to have some fun. I think I think the fun's on Friday. You know what? He didn't invent that though. You know who no, did that first? Mark Hershman. You got it. Down in Oregon. MacArthur Court. Took the Huskies in there. <laughs> We're not intimidated. <laughs> stare us down all you want. We're going to stare right back. That was back, wasn't it? Dick Harder days? No, 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 no. Wait a minute. He did it down there once, but he also did it the first time he walked, went back to Washington State, I believe, uh, as the Husky head coach. I think the, he did it there, too. The players wore him down at Oregon. That's right. The players wore him down at Oregon. There we go. We'll get it straight, Marv. Cedric White's in the ball game now at a defensive line spot. First and ten. Roberts trying to string it out. Gets through the first wave. Lewis Jones misses him, and Jamal Fontaine finally cuts back to bring him down. He should have the first down. Timeout called by Stanford. Steve Stenstrom back in the game has done nothing but hand off to this man since he got back in there. That shoulder may not be full speed, but Bill Wall certainly wants the Huskies to think that it is. And take good care of the ball. We'll find out now with 55 seconds to go, and we're not in our own end zone anymore. This guy uh, isn't bad. <laughs> Jumped up a few spots today. We talk about rotating quarterbacks. I guess it doesn't matter who's a quarterback. You give the ball to Napoleon Kaufman. Frank Garcia, one of his bodyguards to the left of Napoleon, and Richard Thomas, who many of his teammates feel is the hardest hitter on this team. He's the backup fullback to Matt Jones. And they ask each player during the spring ball who will be the most surprising offensive player for Lambright's team. Many of them said on offense it'll be Richard Thomas. He's gained the respect of his teammates. First and ten from the 38. 
55 seconds remaining first half Stanford territory and they lay it off to Tony Klein the tight end Klein came into this game with very few catches last year only seven averaging a little over seven yards per as Steve Springstead made the tackle clock still running 36 35 seconds they're still in Stanford territory on second and seven across the middle the tight end again Lamar Lyons with a lick on him but not until after Klein made the tackle another five or six yards and they're in field goal range for Eric Abrams as long last year was forty nine but he can clock can't kick them longer than that He's moving the change stops the clock twenty eight seconds to go Stanford still has one timeout they'd like to save it for the field goal team if necessary crowd waking up across the middle incomplete looking for Justin Armour. That was a bit of a wake up call that last catch by Klein for the Husky secondary. This is getting a little bit serious here. We're getting down into crunch time. With a quarterback like Stenstrom, a minute and a half can be an eternity. And you've got a, a coaching mind like Bill Walsh that certainly knows how to use the clock yes. via play calling. Put your quarterback in a position where he can stop the clock. Klein has four catches today for 46 yards. He had seven catches all of 19. 92. It wasn't penciled in to be the starter. Justin Armour was supposed to be the starter at tight end, but they couldn't find any wide receiver, so Armour went back. Klein is the man. Flags down right at the snap of the ball, as you saw Stenstrom not even follow through. Now we've got a flag in the Husky secondary. Okay, offense on the Cardinal. Delay of game, the official. Uh, That's amazing. Delay of game, and you've got 18 seconds on the clock. That will not make Bill Walsh very the happy. Clock, the clock had been stopped on the incomplete pass previously. It just right. took too long to get plays called and, and executed. It's a big five yards. Now, instead of five yards to get into 50 right. yard field goal territory, you've got 10 to go. Well, as you mentioned earlier, Abrams' longest kick last year, 49 yards, so that means the 39, which means they got to get the ball, the line of scrimmage, to the 32. The wind, what little there is right now, is in the face of Stanford. They're 15 yards away from being where they need to be for Abrams' range. Stenstrom going deep across the middle, intercepted. Let's see. Springstead's the one who got the ball. Yes, indeed. Interception. Obviously, his first of the year. Springstead picks it off. Stanford had created an opportunity for them, and Steve Springstead took it away. See right here, once again, pressure up the middle. Lots of people coming. Steve Stenstrom gets some time. To throw the ball, but Steve Springstead closes the gap in front of the receiver. Springstead says, You can fool me once and get a touchdown, but not twice and get 15. I see a big crowd right in there. There's three guys that could have had a hand on that ball, and only or four guys, and only one of them is wearing a white shirt. Heward back at quarterback for Washington as they'll, oh my, they're going to throw. <laughs> Well, Jim Lambright, <coughs> normally uh, we would have seen them run out the clock. He's showing faith in this youngster at quarterback. Do. It might be a chance, too, to get him a couple of completions before they have to feel good going into the second half. <laughs> I'm so used to seeing the coaching staff decide, let's just run it off. We got the three point lead. Let's get into the huddle. And here's Jim. He's out there, bombs away with 14 seconds remaining. Give it a try. That's not what they're expecting us to do. Probably a little bit more. Aggressive, shall we say, yeah. offensively. That's what a defensive coordinator does when you're head coach. <laughs> yeah, he's always wanted to do that. <laughs> he's going to do it again. Took like it downhill. Down Can't get around the defender. Number 23, David Walker, and that's going to do it. So the first half is in the books, and the Washington Huskies come up with a three point lead over their fellow co pac 10 champions in 92. Wait a minute. Hold the phone. We're going to have to go up the tunnel and get a whole lot of purple shirts. The Huskies call timeout with one second on the clock. One second. <laughs> Two seconds. I hope none of the say. coaches are up there. They're coming back out. I think 
I saw Napoleon Kaufman being one of the leaders up the tunnel. He's, he's ready to sit down and suck out an orange he's wedge. Probably, he's probably <laughs> got that Gatorade halfway down. I think we might just line up with whoever we got and go to a knee anyway. <laughs> Running out of bodies. Both teams do still have 11 men. Stanford's are well dispersed. I don't see Kaufman, though. <laughs> no, he was up the tunnel. He's way up there. They're going to have to get him via the phone. He's going to sit down and say, where is everybody? I'll tell you one thing, right about now he's starting to panic. <laughs> I missed something. Oh, Jim with the headsets off. He's, he's ready for the half. You see Dave Janoski and Leon Neal will both line up deep in the backfield. I think. Okay. We now go. we can go. Good thing we'll use that timeout. Seems As like I was saying earlier, <laughs> Chuck Nelson. <laughs> Try it again. You had your warm up. An 86 yard drive by Stanford and a touchdown gave them the lead 7 to 3. Huskies come back 77 yards later and retake the lead and they go into the locker room for a second time, leading 10 to 7. Third quarter about to begin, a three point lead for the Huskies. Three scoring drives in the entire first half. Travis Hansen will kick off. For Stanford, they got the first touchdown of the day a fumble, punt, punt, then the touchdown after 86 yards. Punting again after losing nine yards, and then the interception by Springstead. For the Huskies, remember they tried to go on fourth and a yard, didn't do it, then the field goal, later the touchdown, and then halftime. Stanford won the toss to begin this game. They deferred. And they will get the first possession to begin the second half with a crowd of better than 71,800 here on this cloudy, yet the sun is trying to peek through kind of day. 34, Camella, and 32, Mitchell, the two pure freshmen back to receive for the Cardinal. A moral victory, if nothing else, for Stanford here in the first half, even though they're way down in total yards against Washington. Camella to the 20 runs into his own man finally up to the 28 yard line and it'll be Stanford ball Steve Stenstrom with a bruised right shoulder will be out there at quarterback 217 total yards for Washington 130 for the Cardinal 125 of that in the air only five yards rushing and as Chuck pointed out earlier anytime you're sacked Put the minus against the rushing total for your day. So Stenstrom, the senior, in at quarterback. I'd like to keep that momentum he established in the first half going. The start of the third quarter, so important to who's going to dominate the second half. 14 touchdown passes last year. Here he is, first and 10 from the 28. Gets it to the outside of Ethan Allen, the fullback, has the first down and knocked out of bounds at the 43 yard line of Stanford. Knocked out by Lewis Jones, who got a start. Last year against Arizona State in the season opener. Ethan Allen with 14 yards on the play. Yeah, once again, just like we saw a lot of in the first half, you see people taking people deep, running through zones, and then you take somebody out in the perimeter. Allen, who carried the ball 35 times last year, but only for 2.7 yards per. First and 10. Pressure. Down he goes. Lewis Jones. The blitz by the Rover, and that is sack number five. Jones, one of the first there anyway, along with Andy Mason. You see four bodies on that pile. That's not a good sign if you're a Stanford quarterback having to get through four guys to get up. Andy Mason, part of that, be his second of the ball game. This Washington defense, when they put pressure on the quarterback, are so dominating. When they don't, they have been picked apart by Stanford. That's a loss of eight yards. They put them. Back on the 35 yard line. Second down and 18. Quick with the pass. Jamal Fontaine almost got a second sack. Down he goes anyway. No, they give it to Roberts, who is able to, with a shovel pass, pick it up and pick up some fairly decent yardage. Got at least two or three, considering what was happening. Good presence of mind by Steve Stenstrom. Jamal Fontaine had. I got to see this again. Had a chance at picking up his third of the day. Wide open shot, just doesn't finish him off. And then DeMarco Farr right here gets his chance 
Oh, that's how he did it. Okay. Even Bill Walsh, the offensive genius, didn't draw that one up. Third down and 15. All that for a three yard gain. Here comes DeMarco Farr from the outside. Jones gets a hand on it. David Shaw, the intended receiver, but the number one got one, two, or three pickies on the pick skin. Lewis Jones in a battle all fall camp with David Kilpatrick for the rover back position. This time gets up just enough to keep the ball from getting to David Shaw. Nice play on third down. Those first and second down sacks don't do you any good unless you can finish him up with a strong play on third down. Napoleon Kaufman will receive this punt. Mills fairly low. He could run this one. Maybe not. Just as I said it, I thought if he could get by <laughs> number 91. So no return on the part of Napoleon Kaufman. Jason White, the man with this tackle, will be back. Jason White with the tackle. About two minutes used up on the first drive or possession by Stanford here in the second half. No points or an out, actually. So it's first and ten. Jason Shelley wide to the left side. And Damon Huard starts the second half. First and ten. Napoleon Kaufman, who had 118 net yards rushing in the first half, carries for four yards up to the 23-yard line. John Sims, the right outside linebacker, with yet another tackle. The sophomore out of Merced's been busy. He has been, has been number eight. One of the comments Don James made said it looked like Washington could run the ball just about any time they wanted to. We know that they want to be able to throw it when they want, run it when they want, but it will get to the point eventually where you're going to do what you can do, not what you want to do. you got to get points, as Don said. That's the bottom line. Kaufman going in motion on second down and six. Kaufman, they try to get him isolated. Well, he got away from one. Fumble, and I think the Huskies have it. I'd be happy just to see his head remaining on his body. Napoleon got twisted around there pretty strong. Mark Bruner, the tight end, is the hero, if indeed it was a fumble. Says again, again, Don, just get the ball to Napoleon Kaufman somehow. There's just not a lot of room right here. He just tucks it in and says, okay, I'm done. Ooh. Get a hold, gets a hold, not on the face mask, but on the Top of forehead of the helmet. Yeah. Good hustle by Mark Bruner. Third down and three as two wide receivers go to the top of your screen. Pitch, Coppin, got to beat his man, not going to do it. Tommy Connect, number 14, came up and made the kill, but a good job by Sims again with the penetration and a loss of one yard. Nice punt by Aaron Mills, established his field position by Stanford. Good series by the defense, keeps it. It's John Wardell's turn to try to get some of that field position back. Kevin Garnett, I want to give him credit too. The free safety came up to assist on Napoleon. Pruitt awaits the punt by John Wardell, who's back on his own 10. Pruitt on his own 25, 35. Good high. Beautiful punt. Pruitt all the way back to his own 20. They've got him cornered on the sideline, still on his feet, however. Leif Johnson gives a lick. Down he goes finally on the 30 yard line. 59 yards. From his own 21. They had Pruitt cornered on the sideline, and he did a nifty job of picking up a few extra yards on his own. Talk about John Wardell's chance to get the yardage back. He does and more. Long last year was 65. He's got the leg strength. 10.52 remaining, third quarter. First and 10. Officially, they're calling it a 54 yard punt. First and 10 from the 30 yard line. Wide receiver to each side. Everybody up defensively. Trying to go one on one armor. He had a couple of steps on Reggie Reeser. Took advantage of the one on one. Throw it out there where my guy can chase it down. Just can't quite get it. That's a good call. Everybody was up. 
Reggie Reeser in the, I was going to say in the face of Justin Armour, but he's not tall enough, more like in the chest of Justin Armour. Ball thrown very well, just that much too far. Kind of gives you some idea of the height advantage, too, that first moment when you could see both the defender and the receiver. Second down and 10. Ball on the 30. Roberts coming around the side. Made the big mistake of hitting the brakes. And Hillary Butler comes in for the kill. Also, DeMarco Farr. Well, the speed of this defense, once you start on a path going outside, you better keep going in a straight line because if you hesitate for a second, they're going to get you. Hillary Roberts right there says, I'm going to come back inside. But the pursuit angle of Hillary Butler is such that there is no inside. Right there, you're dead. And the news isn't any better if he tries to go outside, but at least he's got a fighting chance. Hillary Butler, who had that foot injury, toe injury, fracture last year, missed four games, finally healthy, and he is the man now that All-American Dave Hoffman is gone. Third down and 13. Armour up to the 43-yard line and a Stanford first down. Been a long day for Reggie Reeser going against Armour. Play action, roll the other way. Armour stays out here on this side. Reeser comes back here. You can see Armour is lined up at a tight end position. Reeser picks him up right here. Just doesn't get out of his break soon enough. Good timing between quarterback and receiver. First down, Stanford. First down from the 44 of Stanford. Again, everybody up. Deep drop. Got to hurry. Oh! David Kilpatrick. Oh, so close. Thanks to the pressure on the quarterback by far and company. Steve Stenstrom lets this ball go. My first thought is touchdown Huskies. David Kilpatrick is closing in a hurry. He can keep his feet a little bit longer. Six inches to the left, and then he's got at least the takeaway. Not the kind of throw that Bill Walsh is going to congratulate Steve Stetzer <laughs> for making, the, either the throw or the decision. He, would, he suffered only nine interceptions last year. Second down and ten for Stenstrom and company. Roberts. Nothing doing. Minimal gain up to the 46 yard line. It will be third down and eight. So third and long for Roberts. Roberts said it was so loud at Husky Stadium last year, they would have to go from the quarterback to the tight end to the halfback to get your signal straight. You couldn't hear. You've got to walk and look in the guy's face in order to give him. The new play. Yeah, you'd pass it on out to the tech to get it to the receiver, I guess is the point I was trying to make. Things take time. Fontaine, DeMarco Farr trying to put the pressure on. Third down and eight. Big play. One pump, two pumps. Josh Moore, who led this team in interceptions last year, was all over Mr. Armour like White on Rice. Didn't take that first pump, stayed right. With Justin Armour and then does a good job. The ball took a while to get there. Does a good job of not getting into Armour before the ball does. And look at some of the pressure that the defensive line goes to apply. And a nice play by Josh Moore. Mills back to punt. And Leon Neal again back to receive. Fair catch called at the 18. There goes the flag. It was a quick wave by Neil, but it was a wave. It was a definite wave. The arm fully extended. I think it was more of a stumble on Nick. the part of Nick Watts than it was a, a threat to lay a lick on him. I think he just kind of ended up in his face and didn't know what else uh, to do. Look at, look at his eyes. I feel sorry for the young man. You see, he's looking at the ball. You see Nick Watts is playing the ball all the way down and not looking at Leon Neal. Good he job was. of finding the ball. Not a very good job of seeing good where call. the receiver is. We'll be back.
Nine and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter. No scoring so far since intermission. Ten to seven, the Huskies. As Jim Lambright's the man. He's what about the fourth alum, I believe, to come over and take over as a head coach. Get to those in a moment. First and ten for Washington after the penalty. Being hit on the fair catch. Oh, the tight end, Bruner. It's a foot race. Tommy Kanak can't get him. He might go all the way. Touchdown. No flags. 66 yards. No touchdown receptions for Mark Bruner last year. He already has two today. And Damon Ewart has two touchdown passes. Oh, some of the speed displayed by Mark Bruner. His longest reception was 31 yards to that point. Hanson's kick is up and he's good. So his string continues. He was a perfect 36 for 36 last season. And Washington extends its lead 17 to 7. Let's look at it one more time. Tight end Mark Bruner lines up on the left side. We talked about how one of the strengths of this team is the tight end. You can see the free safety makes the play to the other side. The Inside of the field becomes wide open. Strong safety. Tommy Connect thinks he has help back there from Kevin Garnett. Mark Bruner has enough speed, even at 6'5, 240, that you're not going to catch him. Bruner, four catches today for 90 yards, including that 66 yard TD. Get 4'7 speed and a 240 pound body. That's what tight ends are supposed to be made of. Damon Ewart at 57 yards passing in the first half. That play alone was more than that. 66 big ones. Yeah, it's the longest reception of Mark Bruner's career, the longest completion of Damon Ewart's career. Had a 61 yarder last year right. to Ron Hill against Oregon State. This one to Mitchell, and he'll stay home. The drive didn't take long. Ten seconds, one play. 66 yards, and Mark Bruner has his second touchdown of the day. Third overall. Wanted to go back a second and talk about his first one, of course. That was the 91 season, the 92 Rose Bowl. But remember the great catch he made, tippy toeing along the end line to stay in the end zone to get the touchdown from Billy Joe Hobart on the Hobart's pass. Two nice plays today. One, the short reception in traffic, that one in open field using his speed. First and 10 in the 20 yard line for Stanford. Now suddenly down by 10. Ellery Roberts. You may have noticed they brought in an extra big man, number 99, who's not even on the roster. Who is an extra offensive lineman. And they'll do that often on what they call the short yardage or heavy load offense. Who that is is Mike Jarrett, the backup guard and tackle, but he's lining up in an eligible position. Oh, that's right. He's got to wear a 90. Right. He has to wear an eligible to number. He's number 66. Well, Maybe he just turns his jersey upside down, puts it back on. <laughs> Second down and seven. Gain of three for Steve Stenstrom. Roberts again. Nice job of forcing it. Jamal Fontaine and then the pursuit by Hillary Butler. One of the duties often of those outside people is no my game. job is to turn him back inside. No I don't have to make every play myself. Get my friends involved. Just don't give up that leverage. Leverage so important in this game. You see Jamal Fontaine turns it back to Hillary Butler. Mike Jarich unable to make the block. Roberts 13 carries today, 33 yards. The Lambright's team responding to this makeshift offense at Stanford right now. Hillary Butler with the play. Hillary brings it down. And the news is even better. The 
preceding play. That was the tenth tackle for loss by this defense. Now the deflection by Butler. And it's time for the defense to sit down and Leon Neal to come back and try another punt return. Leon Neal is deep. Low wobbly punt. If he can get a good bounce, now he won't. He's going to say if Leon Neal could have caught it on the fly, he would have had a chance to uh, do something. He is playing awfully deep, though, isn't he? Leon Neal is lining up 50 yards from the line of scrimmage. Going to have to Husky ball make quite a sprint to get to the ball. Reggie Reeser obviously sprinted right out of his shoe. <laughs> that was only a 39 yard punt. That's well, a 39 yard punt that the guy can't even make a play on. Earlier in the game, we had a 44 yard punt that he couldn't get up to either. He's got to line up, at least put himself in the ballpark. Well, the play of Damon Heward has been outstanding today. He's made good throws and he's also made good decisions. Amen. First and ten from the 39 yard line. Kaufman. It's been relatively Napoleon quiet Kaufman for Napoleon in here in the second quarter. Or excuse me, Gina third quarter. Two. Second half. David Carter with a tackle from the right David end position. On the He's the newcomer up front. When you have second one play, 66 yard drive off and the running backs don't get a whole lot of action. <laughs> it's probably his third or fourth carry of the half. We're just halfway through the third quarter now. And again. The defense huddling up. Second down and eight after the two yard gain. Taking as much time as he could. Pass good to McCarthy. Fighting for the first down. Can't do it. Brought down by number 95, Coy Gibbs. Inside linebacker Coy Gibbs does a nice job of going out to make a play, but he had to make a play because DJ McCarthy absolutely dusts Tommy Connect. <laughs> Comes up one yard short of the first down. Good time by Damon Heward. A great job by Damon Heward of looking around a little bit. DJ McCarthy goes inside. Tommy Connect goes inside. DJ McCarthy gets back outside, but not Tommy Connect. A nice block by Jason Shelley. Receivers get their licks in when they can. Somebody's got to say it. He disconnected. Yes, we knew that. I'll, okay. let, you, I'll let you. Third say down that. and one. Kaufman. He's got the one. He could have six. Von Bryant knocks him OB at the 16 yard line. Check it, 26 yard line. 26 yard run. He tried on short yards to go up the middle a couple times. This time, Napoleon Coughlin starts up the middle and says, Hey, I know where I can get some yards. I'm going back outside. Right here, nice cut outside. Open stride here. Von Bryant does a good job of getting enough angle, enough of Napoleon to get out. 19 carries, 149 yards. Going to be six. Touchdown, Washington! Ernie Conwell! His first touchdown reception as a Husky. Touchdown passes by David Ewer today. All three to Husky tight ends. Two to Bruner, one to Conwell. Play action there, and Conwell is all by himself. Tends to make you think they're really burning the strong safeties today. He said that tight end was a strength. Wide receiver might be a position of weakness just because of depth and injury. Go to your strength. With the kick, the score now 24 to 7, Washington. Much to the delight of 71,800 fans here with now sunshine peeking through the clouds, but a dark, gloomy day for Bill Walsh. Bernie Conwell lined up at wide receiver on the left. The play action fake. Same play. Brings, brings Kevin Garnett right up to the line of scrimmage. By the time he can react, that is what play action is supposed to do. Right there, nice fake by Hewitt and Leon Neal. Bernie Conwell just got to make sure he hangs on to the darn thing. Bernie coming from a winning tradition at high school at Kentwood. Played with Richard Thomas, of course. Honorable mention 
all Pac-10 academically last year. And earning now, you got your first TD. That ball might make its way back to Kent. Four plays in this drive, one drive, in, or one play in the last drive. 66 yards, 61 yards. The offense is starting to get cranked up more than a little bit. Two long plays there in a row, too. The 26-yard run by Napoleon and Kaufman, and then the 26-yard TD pass. Jason Crabb to kick for Washington. Again, it'll go to Mitchell. And again, he'll stay. 6.33 remaining, and it's all purple and gold here. Last couple of minutes, we've got a flag down. And it's back deep in Stanford territory. And we're talking with co-captain Andy Mason, which makes you think it might be some sort of illegal block by Stanford. I don't know. Ooh. Sometimes the kickoff team coming down, the ball's been down in the end zone. Those kickoff guys are, are going to hit somebody anyway. Is that going to add another not, year on probation or anything? Not very smart. It might add another gray hair to the head of Jim Lambright. Not exactly an intelligent penalty to take. Local station recently did an interview or showed the interview that Jim Lambright conducted on the day Don James was hired and asking him about him. Jim had lamb chops. I mean, he had hair all the way down to his jaw. 1975. Oh, yeah. First and 10 from their own 35, and now we've got another flag. Seth Dittman, long day for the left tackle. He was one of five who started at that position last year. And this time the procedure on Stanford. His offensive lineman will get given up a few sacks, and it's a passing play. They're ready to go backwards. They're so ready to react. They know they have to be quick. Well, especially Dittman on that left side. That's the blind side for your quarterback. One little head bob by that defensive end sometimes can get you starting to rock. Huskies get five yards of that personal foul penalty back. Good point. First and 15 from the 30. Armor in motion. Down he goes. DeMarco Farr with the sixth Husky sack. And 11th tackle for loss by the Dogs. Remember once again, last year versus Washington, Stanford gave up 10 sacks. This time, DeMarco Farr goes right between two Stanford linemen, Seth Dittman and Ryan Waters. So you take him, I'll take him, you take him. That's two on the day for DeMarco. Ten last year for the Huskies, six this year. Think about this now. We're talking about not even seven full quarters of play and 16 sacks. Second down and 25 after the loss of 10. Springstead, DeMarco Farr, Trevor Highfield, a host of people there. Loss of 10 on the sack, five yards of the penalty. They got the personal foul <laughs> penalty back in two plays. The total yards for the day, two to one, Washington. Last year, Washington on offense had 467 yards against what finished up as the number 10 defense in the NCAA. 350 and less than three quarters today. Right now, it's the defense's turn to shine, though. Roberts 14 carries 38 yards. Third down and 21. Trying to go deep across the middle to Ellery Roberts. Great job by the secondary that time of holding up their opponent, the receiver. Jam on the line of scrimmage, don't give him a free run. Listen to this crowd. Personal foul penalty on the kickoff, first and 10 at the 35. Now it's Fourth and 21. Jason Shelley now will get his licks in as a punt returner. Mills punt, another low one. Well, we're going to have another flag. Guess what Stanford's going to work on in practice next week? Defensive end once again downfield to make the play. Well, he had a hit earlier, Jason White. White. 
A little overzealous that time. Got to let him catch the ball first, Jason. Well, they're going to have to get together on the last time. The guy knew where the ball was, but not the receiver. This time, the guy knew where the receiver was, but not the ball. Jason Shelley, no fair catch. Going to make a play. Obviously, doesn't even get a chance. And the boos directed towards Stanford, obviously. A very irate, extremely sensitive, ticked off audience. Or a crowd here at Husky Stadium. A lot of negative energy around town <laughs> yeah. here in the last negative two karma. weeks. Some definite release today. A lot of steam above Husky Stadium. Maybe that's why it hasn't cleared off yet. There's so much steam coming up. Got a timeout. Back in a moment. Seven, Washington extending its lead here in the third quarter. A 26 yard pass play to Ernie Conwell, and then a 66 yard pass play reception combination run by Mark Bruner. On first down, it's Leon Neal going around the right side on the fake reverse with Eric Bjornsson at quarterback. In for Damon Heward. Gain him nine yards for Leon, getting his first extensive. Expira workout here in this game. Second down. Maybe his last extensive workout too. Vito you know, Bryant missing the one game because of the suspension. He'll be part, back. Of the, part of the LA job connection that has been frowned upon. Second down and one. This is Richard Harris, the fullback out of Kentwood. Excuse me, Richard Thomas. At Camelot, Camelot. On my mind, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> First and ten for the Huskies. And the ball's on the 31 yard line. 430 remaining here in the third quarter. Yeah, the sun did come out. Stop cursing the weatherman. Huskies will soon have. The Ohio State Buckeyes on their mind as they'll go back to play in Columbus next week. Long way to go to finish up against the Stanford Cardinal today. Oh yeah, but I'm just Leon thinking the if they can keep performing here. like they are today. That certainly helps getting their momentum for next week. Say, there's a definite change in the sense of energy in the stadium when Napoleon Kaufman is not on the field. It's not a wrap against <laughs> Leon right. Neal, but Napoleon Kaufman just from day one in his Husky career has created an absolute buzz just by going on the football field. Remember you and I used to watch when he'd come in and he'd always slip. His feet were going so fast he couldn't keep his weight on top. Second, second down in nine. And he's back. York's in a lot of time. Got a deep tight end who is open. Flag goes down way over on the right side of the field. Did he go across the line of scrimmage, maybe? I think we had some linemen that got downfield a little bit. Bjornsson waited so long to throw the ball that those offensive linemen ran out of bodies to run into. They said, I'm going to go down here and take a look. So we can't be doing that. Huskies will be penalized, walk them back. Right you are, Mr. Nelson. Ineligible receiver downfield. Five yards from the previous spot takes the ball out to the 35 yard line. Illegal, 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 illegal receiver, receiver downfield penalty. So Eric Bjornson looks at third down and 14 from the 35 yard line. Second down, 14 yards to go. Wind is slightly at the back at of the, the Huskies. 35. A lot of national attention for this game as Bjornson brings them up to the line. ABC's here, of course, New York Times, The Daily News, Newsday, Boston Globe, Dallas Morning News. It goes on and on and on. Second and 14. Wanting to go deep, Theron Hill too far. He had Kwame Ellis beaten. Good decision, Eric good route. Ball just slightly overthrown. Seems to be some sort of discussion as to what down it is. The scoreboard has been on third down for about the last three plays, but the down marker was at second. Now goes to three. Field goal team was ready to come on the field after the incompletion. 
So we'll go with the scoreboard. Third down. Other media, Washington Post, LA Times. Of course, they're all here because of the heated rivalry, thanks to the Bill Walsh comments, et cetera, et cetera. Third and 14. Out of bounds. Jason Shelley with a catch. Nice You're throw, right, nice Jason. catch. Just not in Canada. <laughs> Fielding quite that wide. Von Bryant was defending. Fourth down. down. 14, 14 yards to go. go. At the Cardinal 35. Huskies bring up fourth and 14. 35 yard line, line of scrimmage. 52 yarder. Travis Hansen's longest last year was 42. That's not to say he can't make them longer than that. His longest, he only had one Travis attempt, Hansen I believe, over 42 kill. last year. This is within Travis Hansen's range. 52 yards, white ash mark. And if there's any kind of wind at all, it's to his back. Long enough. No good. No good. Nice to see the distance was there. The well, goal get pretty skinny when you get back 52. Travis 10 for 13 on the year last year. Now one for two. And did not attempt one beyond 50 last year. So semantic confidence. Helps to be ahead 24 to 7 too. I yeah, was a little frustrated. Those are the kind that you really like to make because next time the decision comes up is should we try it? Here's you want the coaches to feel like Wyoming they have 60. faith in you. And he had quite a battle with Jason Crabb Another in training camp and in the spring. In fact, Crabb was awarded the most improved kicker award, I believe, from spring football. That's Don the James old, sits atop. The old coach's wife's box. Now the old coach's box. So for Stanford, first and ten from the 35. Those two touchdown strikes by Damon Hewitt really has taken the wind out of Stanford and the energy. All happening in the last ten minutes. Pressure down he goes. They got him by a knee, and it was Jamal Fontaine. Jamal Fontaine certainly getting off to a good start in 1993. That is the third for Fontaine today. He's had. His shots at a couple of others. Remember the play that Stenstra made when he just kind of dished it off to Harry Roberts. I think maybe in 10 years, Fontaine and Stenstra will have a beer over this whole thing and laugh and scratch about it. <laughs> well, I doubt it. Second down and 15 for Stanford. I Fontaine looking his chops. Fontaine might be laughing about it for the next 10 years if he can get away with a victory today. Little draw or delay, and it's effective as Lamar Lyons and Lewis Jones has to bring down the ball carrier, Ethan Allen. Husky fans draw a breath every time they see a running back from the opponent break one up the middle. <laughs> they haven't seen it for four years. A number of long games over the last couple of years on quick hitters up the middle, going for 50, 60 yards plus. That one not enough for the first down, third and three. Minute 58 left here in the third quarter, and Stenstrom wants a timeout. Let's take a timeout of our own with just under two minutes to go. We'll return. third quarter for the Washington Huskies two quick touchdowns they lead it and it's third down and three for Stanford from their own 42 Stenstrom you can hear footsteps now as the pass is incomplete to David Shaw Lewis Jones defending number one somehow Steve Hoffman was way back there too not bad for a nose tackle Stenstrom now two of nine since intermission after a respectable first half. Pressure that time again by Jamal Fontaine. You see, Stenstrom has two completions this half. The Huskies have three sacks this half. Total of seven for the day as Aaron Mills is back to punt. He's had a busy day.
spiral, but rather low. Fair catch called by Shelley, but that doesn't mean a thing with the Stanford team today. <laughs> With a fair Minute 42 the remaining in the third quarter. Huskies would like to get some momentum going once again. That last series ending in the missed field goal kind of slowed things down a little bit after a couple of big play touchdowns. 32 yard punt by Mills. And Damon Hewitt returns as quarterback. And that's a smart decision. This man's only played well, five passes coming into this season. Get him some time, especially with a nice margin and lead. Leon Neal. About two blocks away from doing something severe as he gets the first down up to the 39 yard line. Knocked out of bounds by Kevin Garnett. Nice job by Leon Neal of following his blocker, staying in the path of the play. See what you can see. This is the look from Kevin Garnett. Nice cut here. You'll get a minus right here. Huskies don't switch the ball from arm to arm. First Once you put it in your arm, keep it. 13-yard gain for Leon. First and 10 from the 39-yard line. Jordan is in as a wide receiver now. Neal again, stay in bounds. Can't do it. Eric Bjornsson went in motion to the left. They bring it back to the right. It's a nice chance to get out from some tough field position. Give Leon Neal a chance to play. Give Napoleon Kaufman some rest. Once again, Leon Neal just follows Richard Thomas. Richard Thomas gets a nice block downfield. It's a first down. Leon now with six carries, 49 yards, backing up Napoleon Kaufman, who is up unofficially at 149 yards last time we looked 224 rushing for the team Leon Neal by the way as we go into the shotgun for the first time today carries again and this time he doesn't even get back to the Leon line of scrimmage that was a Lots case of, of look we have the shotgun in our offense Jason everybody Fisk, Fisk came in like a tidal wave to bring Second Leon Neal down, down. Neal is a sophomore out of 45. Long Beach California same state as Napoleon Kaufman, who's out of Lompoc. Watch Fisk this time as he flows down the line of scrimmage against Novell. Novell, very, very good player. That time, Jason Fisk makes the read. Jim Novell doesn't get his body over in between. Move those feet. Second down and 11. Bruner complete to the 39 yard line, short of the first down. I was just watching the mechanics Damon that time of Damon Hewitt as he completes to Bruner. He's a beautiful thing to watch. Oh, he plants that back foot and fires the football. Well, we talked in our opening about how he has been a quarterback for virtually all of his life. Played a little tight end in high school, high school when Billy yeah. Holbert was the quarterback at Puyallup High. But he's been thinking quarterback, very fundamentally sound. Throws a very catchable ball. It gets there in a hurry, but it's not spiraling. It's spiraling very tight, but not that fast. Very catchable. 48 seconds remaining third quarter. Third down and five. Wanting to go deep. Got his man. Shelley. No. Kevin Garnett was about two steps behind Shelley. But the pass was two steps ahead of him. Great protection by the offensive line. Let Damon Hewitt stand back there a long time. Let Jason Shelley get a long way downfield, just not quite far enough. Well executed John play, Wendell except formation. Leroy mm -hmm. Play that long, it's got to be just right. Not a lot of room for error. Threw it back to receive John Wardell's punt. He'll go for the left corner. Oh my. High, high spiral, but just too far. Into the well, he had the idea. Just too much of the old leather and laces going into the football that time. 33 seconds left here First in the third quarter. Robert has done a good job today. Not a great average, but he's had a lot of those type of punts and a good job of dropping the ball in. Stanford been forced to take over deep in their own end. You can see. Nothing. 28, 30, <laughs> 20, 35, 35 starting points well, that and a lot of punts and a lot of little numbers to oh, the yardage yeah. of the drive. Minuses. 
Still only four yards rushing for Stanford. First and ten. Ellery Roberts runs into Lawyer Malloy Roberts, after a short gain of about four yards. Five. And they'll give him five officially. That may be the last play here of the third quarter. Down to 18 seconds. Ellery Roberts, who played behind Second Glenn down, Milburn for quite some time, he has 43 yards in today's game. Milburn moving on to the NFL, as did John Lynch. Now on playing with Tampa Bay, the All-American safety, a converted quarterback. And the third quarter is now in the books, and it was a good one for the Dogs. They broke this one wide open with two touchdown passes to the tight ends, and we'll be back. Two touchdowns in the third quarter extends the lead for the Washington Huskies 24 to 7 as we begin the fourth quarter Don Poyer along with Chuck Nelson on a beautiful Saturday afternoon here at Husky Stadium the numbers passing yards great balance well I was looking at two different sets of numbers but the rushing 223 for Washington in the third quarter 177 total yards 400 this is for the day so far now folks and the average per play of 6.7. Washington 183 yards in the third quarter alone. Second down and five. Stenstrom to Tony Klein. Good for the first down up to the 46 yard line as Russell Hairston made the tackle. Russell, who beat out Josh Moore for the starting position at cornerback in today's game. Stanford never a, has always been a team that you can feel like you could be comfortable with. You can never be too far ahead of a Stanford team because they have always had an ability to oh. score in a hurry. Got tripped up by his own man or simply tripped on the carpet as Stenstrom went down. Quarterbacks backing out sometimes. The center backs out with him, steps on his shoes, and down he goes. As you see in the third quarter. Second down and 16 on the 40 yard line. Stenstrom, you get a look at how tall he is, too. He just falls backwards and loses five. Still has it. Goes to Armour into Husky territory and rocked out of bounds by Lawyer Malloy. Justin Armour lines up as a tight end on the left side, two tight end offense. Comes all the way across the field, basically paralleling the rollout of Steve Stenstrom. And going behind the initial pursuit, too. His defenders, it's hard to keep track of a guy for 30 yards when he's running cross field like that. 74, Glenn Kavanaugh, the veteran center for this Stanford team. It's a veteran offensive line, but it's also an offensive line that gave up 54 sacks last year. Third down and three. Still has it. Play action. Going deep. Looking for armor. Reeser with it. Fumbles the ball. David Kilpatrick wisely wraps it up. Not sure where the pursuit might have been by the white jersey. Reggie Reeser, though, with the interception. Then the fumble. And David Kilpatrick with the ball. Nice play by Reggie Reeser. Once again, one on one with Justin Armour. This time, he wins the battle. Third down, Stenstrom feels like he's got to throw it somewhere to make a play. Pressure from DeMarco Farr forces him to throw it earlier than he wants to. Pressure from the AstroTurf makes his back oh, hurt. My. Ouch. DeMarco Farr looping. Justin Armour then, it's just a jump ball, and this time the little guy gets it. Ball does come out, so Patrick makes the play. Actually, a loss of six or seven yards on the fumble, but. You can see Justin Armour just running around trying to get into some open space. So they start from their own seven yard line and try to get a little breathing room as Kaufman carries up to about the eight and Jason Fish the nose tackle. In his 20th start at nose guard today makes the tackle. He had five tackling attempts by Washington against Washington in 92 up here. As Reggie comes up with the interception, as I said earlier, it's been a good battle at the corner spots. Reggie ahead of Scott Greenlaw. There's been a lot of competition for this Husky 
for those Husky defensive spots. There's new players, but they've competed very well, and the coaching staff feels very comfortable with them. Second down and eight. Here's a chance for some big yardage. Kaufman, if he can stay in bounds, can't do it. The pursuit was coming in. Kwame Ellis, along with Tommy Connect. As the defense gets a chance to rest, it has allowed but one touchdown, an 86 yard drive. Once again, Napoleon Kaufman takes it up inside and then cuts it out to where the open space is. Look at the wrestling match in the offensive backfield. <laughs> Tries to outrun everybody. Tommy Connect was one of the men they were trying to block, and also Mark Bruner for the Huskies at tight end was trying to tie up one of the members of the secondary. Pete Gallagher's in there, along with Tom Gallagher. First down and ten. Kaufman, little jitterbug move after things get clogged up a bit. Oh, and somehow he still gets up close to the first down. If he's not the most exciting tailback or running back in the Pac-10, I'd like to find one who is more exciting than him. Getting some help from his big people up front today. That time Andy Peterson pumps him, pumps him outside. You can see the average has actually gone up from 7.9 to 8.3 yards per carry. 118 in the first half, tacking on another few dozen. 251 yards rushing today. Most of it behind guys like him, Andrew Peterson, number 60. First and 10. And Matt Jones meets face to face with Jason Fisk, the nose tackle. Senior out of Davis, California, just west of Sacramento. Matt Jones not carried for all that much yardage last year, 126 yards total. Had a couple of the touchdowns. But was a fairly busy receiver at 14 catches as he was the backup to Darius Turner. Now in a Kansas City Chiefs uniform drafted in the fifth round. Jason Fish continues to play like this. He'll be <laughs> drafted as well. He's be up there with Rob Waldrop of Arizona. Had a great game. Second down and 12. Here's the toss sweep to Neal. And somehow was able to hold on to the ball and then is stripped up by Vaughn Bryant, number four, the right cornerback. A little timing problem there on the pitch. The offensive lineman, the pulling people didn't quite get out of the way. Andy Mason has gotten in Steve Stenstrom's way an awful lot today. Captain out of Longview, tremendous athlete, taking on a real leadership role in an admittedly troubled time in the Husky football program. Times like these when the leaders really need to step forward and keep things going in the right direction. Third down and 10 for Hewitt at quarterback with Janoski to the bottom of the screen. Draw, Neal got an AstroTurf bounce and is able to come up close to the first down. Getting a pretty good spot on the play. I think he actually picked up enough yardage. John you know, Sims on the tackle. One bouncer, David Hewitt and Leon Neal. The last two plays have had trouble getting the ball from one guy to another as Coy Gibbs on the Stanford defensive side is taking a break. Love those carpets. At least he dropped it the right way right there. Enough for a first. Leon now has nine carries 58 yards going against the Walsh defense. Seven yards a pop for your backup tailback. You'll take it. First and ten. Ball right on the 45. Matt Jones giving it a try to no avail as Pete Swanson the backup right in this time lining up on the other side wraps up the senior <laughs> the Pete palms said, up like what do you want me to do yeah <laughs> I, had no, I had no place else to go hard to go uh, gain many yards when a brick wall is right in front of you nice play by Swanson beating Andrew Peterson down the line Kaufman back into the backfield Says that's enough, Leon. I need more yards. Second down and ten. We'll get an update on Kaufman's yardage here in a moment too. The pass to Brunel. That has become a distinct connection. As Bruner gets it again. You've got a quality tight end like Mark Bruner. You've got a quarterback who hasn't played a whole lot. We've got wide receivers decimated by, indus, by injury and are fairly new anyway. Ron Bryant, the veteran defensive back, corner for Stanford. Third, seen enough of these Huskies, that's for sure. 
Third down and one. Napoleon Kaufman now 22 carries 176 yards. And Jim Navelle, the center for the Huskies. Leading the charge up front. Hewer, don't fumble the football. Hold on. He does and gets down to the 32 yard line. Nice to have a quarterback at 6'4 and 220 pounds. He's got some muscle and some weight to carry a few tacklers as Kwame Ellis is credited with the tackle. A very good athlete as well. Right here, you see, he makes the decision and turns up field. First down. His option off has become such a big part of the Husky offense started when they had Mark Brunel and because of his talent and has stayed with the Huskies as they have recognized its value in keeping defenses off balance. First and 10 for the Huskies down to the Stanford 33 yard line. We're in the fourth quarter. Here's the bootleg. They set it up trying to go to Matt Jones and he could hear him coming and that was Garnett the free safety who was mirroring. Matt as he came out to the left side. Nice job of just catching the ball. Good job also recognizing he's about to get cracked and, well. <laughs> and catching it and, and bracing for the blow right away. Play action, come out here, throw it to your fullback. A very versatile player is Matt Jones right here. He says, okay, I'm not going anywhere. I'm just going to take my lick. Averaged over 10 yards a catch last year. It's pretty good production in the passing game from your fullback. Richard Thomas now into the ball game. Second down and 10. There's the draw. Kaufman slices and dices his way. Oh, one slip. He had another blocker waiting for him if he could have gotten to the sidelines in Jason Shellett. Sometimes that head and upper body wants to go someplace and those feet just can't quite follow. See the crowd appreciates what Napoleon Kaufman can do. He is now up to 188 yards. His career high, 208 against California. First and 10 from the 21 for the Cardinal. Line of scrimmage has been owned by the dogs today. Guess who? That'll put him over the 190 mark as he's to the 15 yard line, short of the first down. Garnett and the outside linebacker Mike Hall on the tackle. 194. And he's limping. Standing O by the crowd. I think that little bit of limp will probably take care of him for the day. Not that he can't come back. The coaching staff doesn't want to take the chance. Not necessary at this point. And they've still got Ben O'Brien coming back next week. Not bad. Frightening thought if you're a defensive coordinator. Short yardage on second down. Three yard gain. As Kevin Garnett again, the free safety on the tackle. Kevin, a senior out of Naperville, Illinois. You've got seniors in Connect and Garnett playing in the safety positions but not all that much experience as starters or regulars and a sophomore in the left corner two outside linebackers who have never had that many minutes in a Cardinal uniform and at times it is shown today they're down in one Jones in motion Neal and standing people up in a hurry was Toby Norwood and then Jason Fisk came in on the tackle on the tackle. Kaufman. They got the first down as Kaufman receives continued congratulations from his teammates and coaches. We have him at 194 yards unofficially. Huskies have almost rushed for 300 yards in this game. 297, 482 sorry, for the day. One happy Nipster. He likes those uh, season opening games. Had those two long runs against ASU down in Tempe last year. First down, pressure gets away just in time. Conwell, the intended receiver, on second and ten. Vaughn Bryant defending number four. Vaughn had some help back there too. Probably not the best decision by David Hewitt today. Vaughn had an interception against the Dogs last year. Talked about Washington's almost 300 yards rushing. Stanford happy with three or unhappy with three. Seven sacks for the day officially. It's almost 
700 yards that the Huskies have gained rushing the ball on Stanford in two games. Second and 10. Neal to the three, maybe down to the two yard line. As we reach the six minute mark here in the fourth quarter. Talk about the inexperience of a lot of those players on the Stanford defense. They're getting a load of it today. It seems like the Huskies have had the ball for this entire second half. This drive has taken forever. And that offensive line continues to dominate. Well, when you talk about big people and wearing down a defense, this is the kind of games that, that you like to see that in. The fourth quarter, your big men are getting a lot of time. Andrew Peterson, Frank Garcia, Gallagher, Pete Pearson, and Neville. Third and one. They can get a first down. Leon Neal trying to get his first Husky touchdown at least gets the first down. A lot of firsts today. I think I know a head coach is going to be a happy man when he goes home tonight in his debut. Actually, he's coming up just a little short on that first down. Well, there is a poster put up on the railing on the other side that says, Hey, Jim, run it up. <laughs> Talking to Jim Lambright, if this is not a first down, by a foot, there kick, it is. Do you kick the foot? Do you kick the field goal? Or do you score the touchdown? Husky fans want sevens, not threes. Coy Gibbs wants to stop them from either. Neal on 13 carries for 70 yards. The drive itself, eight and a half minutes. 17 plays. I said that they've had the ball this whole quarter. I was right. Fourth down. Neal's the tailback. Ewart, touchdown. His first rushing touchdown as a Husky. A drive that lasted more than eight and a half minutes. Hansen for the extra point. And it is 31 to 7. Washington continuing to vent that frustration and feel the warm glow of a big lead. Thirty one to seven fourth quarter that may be one of the longest drives we have ever seen in number of plays certainly 18 15 on the ground and three going upstairs but 93 yards. remember it began clear back on the seven yard line and then finally Damon Yord with his first rushing TD as a Husky three touchdown passes one touchdown rushing not a bad day for your quarterback debut well I compared with other Debuts. You think of Billy Joe Hobart. You think of Mark Brunel against San Jose State. You think of a Warren Moon. You think of Kerry Conklin who really struggled. This man has not struggled today. Against the 15th ranked team in the country. And either they have really done a great job of putting him in situations where it's easy for him to make the decision, or Damon Heward's a lot better than we thought he was. Or and we knew he was good. He's as good as we thought he was, yeah. I think. Yeah, or better. Mitchell. Lewis Jones is on top of the pile number one for the Huskies. A whole bunch of bodies on the bottom of that pile. <laughs> yeah. As Mitchell is getting a rude tough education here in major college ball like the freshman out of Phoenix Arizona and we mentioned earlier consensus high school all America. Mark Butterfield will be the quarterback for Stanford. Understandably. Bill Walsh folding his cards a little bit so to speak. <laughs> Steve Stentron is only too happy to know he never has to play in this stadium again. 
On first and ten, Mitchell is the tailback. As Mike gets his first experience now at the major college level, his numbers last year, as we see what's going on in the sidelines, looking at that shoulder again of Stenstrom. Comparing one to the other. Mitchell, the tailback, as we go back onto the game field, over 2,200 yards last year and 29 touchdowns. Second down and eight. This is Greg Camilla, who gets up to the 19 yard line. Second unit in there for the Huskies as well as Mike Darrell makes the tackle. Stanford, one of the few programs, probably in the top two, with they and Notre Dame as far as programs that can recruit nationally. They'll have players from everywhere. The Huskies Jim happy Neville. to have players like Jim Novell. I think he's thanking the crowd somebody was pointing up there and smiling looking for somebody Very nice down sunny day five. on that north side Butterfield going to throw and complete to wide receiver Brian Manning they're down into their three and four deeps that being Stanford 11 yard gain first down Butterfield a junior Saw a lot of action up here in Husky Stadium last year, as we mentioned earlier. Stanford trailing now by 24. They, that's a moral victory for them. The last three years, they've lost by 34, 36, and 35 points to Washington. On first and 10, got to hurry as Lawyer Malloy is defending against number 82, Mark Harris. <laughs> and Jim Novell continues to lead the cheers from the sideline. Well, Jim Novell has been a happy man in Husky Stadium. This senior class, of which Jim Novell is a co captain and one of the leaders, with a victory today, will be 19 and 1 in Husky Stadium. They've been ranked in the AP poll every week of their Husky careers 29 and 4 overall for this senior class, 30 and 4. If they can hold a 24 point lead for three minutes and 20 seconds. The throw by Butterfield good for the first down as they threw to number 82 Mark Harris again up near the 40 yard line. Talk about Keith Gilbertson brings up another topic. He's from Snohomish. There are three Pac-10 head football coaches right, from sure. Snohomish County. Jim Lambright and Mike Price both from Everett. Keith Gilbertson from Snohomish. First and ten. Manning again the intended receiver Hanson opened things up for Washington in the first quarter with that field goal from 32 yards then nice 86 yard drive by Stanford and the seven yard completion to Roberts coming out of the backfield 77 yard drive by the U University of Washington Huskies capped by the nine yard TD pass Bruner comes back with another one on the 66 yard reception and run. Ernie Conwell not to be outdone gets his own 26 yard TD reception finally Heward on that 93 yard drive comes up with a one yard run to the right side second down and 10 for Stanford Butterfield little pup got a purple jersey in the way now he has a host of them he's going to go down fighting and it may be a face mask as the flag went down. Pressure by David Ritchie and a host of pals, one of whom grabbed the face mask of Mark Butterfield. Bill Richardson, the referee tonight, today. Well, sun's out. Jim puts the hat on. John Bradford, our statistician, always comes up with great stuff. Here's some good stuff. Last 10 Stanford Washington games. Washington has outscored Stanford 352 to 127. It's more than two to one. All 10 of those have been victories for Washington. They've won nine consecutive games. In all 10 games, that man was the defensive coordinator, and you can add 15 more years beyond that, and he was involved. Second down and five for Butterfield and the Cardinal. Closing in are the Huskies short of the first down. As one of the first to get there was 
Justin Thomas. Thomas trying to confuse everybody as much as possible by Certainly changing has. to jersey number five. A nice day for your quarterback start. 14 for 23. 23 174 yards. A couple of touchdowns. Three I believe actually and one rushing. He only got three so it's third down and two. Coming to the outside trying to get around the corner is Mitchell. And does a pretty good job and gets the first down. And wholesale substitutions right now by Washington. Washington, if you look over the 90s so far, second and third only to Miami and Florida State. Pretty good company. Alabama after last year's 12 and 0, 13 and 0 season. And Texas A&M with a less than formidable schedule still up there. Big I'm sorry, I can't. Big victories get. over Rice and TCU every yeah, year. Yeah, when you beat Baylor, you can be proud. I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> First and ten for Stanford. Coming down to two minutes here in the ball game. Carrying is Greg Camella, a hard-nosed, pure freshman who will be teamed up with Mike Mitchell. They will be the future backfield for this Cardinal team and Bill Walsh. Camella out of Wesley, Massachusetts, and Mitchell, as we said, out of Phoenix, Arizona. So East meets West, and they will spend their career together as Steve Hoffman, who is out of San Jose, with his buddy from Aberdeen, Washington, Mark Bruner. And Steve Hoyum, number 75. The rest of the offensive line, Jeff Bucky for Stanford. Go back and roll up their sleeves and get back to work next week. Mitchell carries to the right side on second down and two. Stanford next week goes to non conference play and plays San Jose State down on the farm. The schedule this year is always or as difficult as always non conference games in addition to San Jose State, Colorado, and Notre Dame. Washington, of course, prepares to go back to Ohio State, go back into the Big Ten and take on the Buckeyes. We don't know if Mr. Nelson or Mr. Poyo will be going back to Ohio State. We'll find out on Tuesday. Uh, it's a, a ruling that is involving the Pac-10, another national cable network, the Pac-10, the Big Ten, Washington, and Ohio State. Uh, we're just pawns in that television political Chuck game. I, we're, we're, just, we're just a couple of wallflowers in the, the big conference room waiting for the decision. <laughs> and when we find out, we'll go get an airplane ticket and get back to Columbus. A couple of good drive-ins back there. Burger drive ins. Oh, I thought maybe we were going to go see a movie on Friday night or oh, something. What they call it? White Castle? Isn't it the White Castle drive ins? You, right you, you can go to the White Castle. No, nah, I, I, you know, they, they, make, <laughs> they make those little hamburgers uh, that are about the size of a quarter, but you can buy them about a quarter each. Yeah, they're wonderful. Yeah, well, for about the first, for about a half hour, they're wonderful. <laughs> Let's put it that way. They had one of those in Minneapolis. Uh, 128 remaining. 88 seconds and Jim Lambright can go phew walk by his office Thursday and the door was open I just took my head in and said hey Jim just want to wish you the best of luck relax have fun out there and go get him and he looks up at me and crosses both index fingers like for good luck looks at me and just drops his head like oh boy I hope I could just get through this first one and he has taken on the genius genius and he has been victorious. Mr. Walsh has certainly had his share of success as a head football coach. And Lambright looking to have more on top of this. And for Stanford, the long term looks very good. Again, they had an outstanding, great recruiting year. 17 prep All Americans in their recruiting class. Out of 20, yes. Butterfield, the bullet. That might be a late hit. Eh, no call. As the pass is complete to number 82, Mark Harris. Marking it, it is short of the first down. Nine yard gain with a minute 23. Eight up only five seconds. After that, Huskies have a bye after they go to Ohio State next week as they pass on into Mitchell, trying to get his first college touchdown. He is about six inches short of doing so. Jared Maines, a redshirt freshman from Puyallup and Bethel High School, made the touchdown saving tackle. 
Justin Thomas Scott Greenlaw. A lot of names we've heard but not seen a lot of. Are getting some action again here. Butterfield with a good drive. A minute to go. Clock running. First and goal from the one. And Mitchell gets the TD. And the folks who made the trip up from Palo Alto, I'd say maybe a couple thousand standing up and cheering. Steve Stenstrom still in there, but on the sideline without his pads on. And our congrats to Mike Mitchell. He's going to hold on to that football. He says, I got four more years here at least. And we'll bring some good times here as Jim Lambright. And knowing Jim, he's saying, well, how did that happen? Why? How did they score? They will evaluate just you like they believe would a, a first quarter drive with the first team defense in there. And the kick by Abrams is good. So the second touchdown for Stanford, 54 seconds to go before we mop up. This one is just about done as Washington leads it 31 to 14 less than a minute to go. This program is authorized under television rights granted by the University of Washington. Any publication reproduction rebroadcast or other use of the pictures descriptions and accounts of this game without the express written consent of Prime Sports Northwest is prohibited. In the second half here is what Washington has done with the football punting two touchdowns. A missed field goal, a punt, and yet another TD. 93 yards on that last drive. After that, up eight minutes and 48 seconds. After that first series, too, you see a lot of good, solid drives. A couple of first downs, at least, in every drive. And it looks like an onside kick attempt by Stanford. And instead, Theron Hill will let it go into the end zone, and Leon Neal better. Put a hand on it, and then the whistle does blow. Sounds like the uh, players of the band back in there—they were chanting "DJ" for Don James. Very touching moment, very warm, wonderful moment before the game, and all the players took a knee and looked up at the booth where Don James and his wife Carol were watched on. He may not be on the sideline, but his influence obviously is still very strong over this program. And will continue like a John Goodwin down in uh, John Wooden down in uh, UCLA in basketball. He's been in this community for a long time, intends to stay, and intends to be very visible. He certainly hasn't retired from public view in the two weeks since he retired as head football coach. Ted Stark getting a workout at quarterback now. Third string QB, the redshirt freshman out of Medford, Oregon. Big and strong, 6'4, 215. Also a good punter. He looks better in that 13 than I did, too. <laughs> so it's second down and six, 23, 22. Clock winding down, he might get one more play in. Leif Johnson is the fullback. Valuable, valuable special teams player. Tobias Brookens is the tailback. He'll get the last couple of carries, and this one's over. So it's over. The Huskies win their first game. Bill Walsh will head out to the center of the field to meet Jim Lambright. Jim personally offended. By the comments made by Bill, and he made no secret about it. He Good let luck, folks man. know it. Good luck. And I know he will enjoy this victory as much as anyone. And I'm not sure if they're going to find each other or not. There they do. And I know Bill Walsh will be happy to leave town and get on to take on San Jose State as the Huskies prepare for Ohio State. Be right back. 